Excellent. So, hello and welcome to Norvald, uh, which is a homebrew Pathfinder campaign set in a land of ice and snow. So Pathfinder is a fantasy role-playing game that utilizes the collective imagination of its players. We're joined by our, our three adventurers this time. Uh, Lee is playing Giles, the half-elf cleric, pledged pledge to the god Nex. Dave is playing Angelus, the human rogue, and Ad is playing Ulf, the half-elf ranger. Our adventurers are escorting Chieftain's Fed to vote for the next Jarl at a great moot. Already they've faced many obstacles in their path. Last session, we encountered a dangerous troll, some fire, and some gold. So there we go. Let's make a start. Mm -hmm. I say you encountered gold. You encountered the loss of a lot of gold because you spent your money on everything you possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's the longest preparation I've ever seen to uh, to anticipate a troll ever. Yeah. So you guys decided to half take the carriage with the Hindle traders and half sort of walk to speed up. Um, you kind of find that you you know you kind of end up switching with Sved and Giles who are on the carriage because you guys start slowing the caravan down because it, it's traveling at about sort of 20, 25 miles an hour sort of quite quickly. You guys are jogging alongside it. Um, actually, it's probably less than 25 miles an hour. A human jogging at 25 miles an hour would be quite a lot. So it's probably moving about 10 miles an hour and you guys kind of get knackered at, at walking at a brisk pace for, for a lot. So you kind of switch, keep yourselves fresh by hopping on and off the carriage. And it's not long until you guys reach Thryn. So on your way, before you guys kind of just get there, Sved hops off the caravan and sort of has a, a chat with you. Or you guys are following and he's sort of on the back of the caravan and he's leaning forward and he's having a talk with you all. And he's saying... Um, I guess I should talk a little bit more about what I want you to do when we reach Thryn. Oh, okay. He says, well, um, I'm not proud of it, but at the last great moot, I had a, I, I was a young man. We voted in the last Jarl and um, I'm very proud. And I had my family's ax cord, Ice Fang which has been passed on from his father before that and his father before that, as, as far as I can remember. It's a good quality steel axe, and it's more sentimental than anything, but it's a good fine throwing axe. Um, Laffy, um, Jorvikson, the chieftain of Nilf, bet me when I was very, very drunk that I couldn't throw my axe across the gorge and it reached the other side. And uh, in my drunkness, I uh, took that bet and threw my axe into the gorge and it plummeted to the bottom. A very silly thing to do, a very silly thing for a man to do. But sadly, my family heirloom was, was lost. And I didn't think, because Carl was significantly younger than me at the time, he was a, he was a young teenager when he was voted in, I didn't think that I would have this opportunity again. So now we're allowed back into Thryn because the sacred land is closed off whenever there's not a great moot and only the rangers are allowed in. Um, I asked one of the rangers who was around at that time, Jor, if he could find this axe for me. So I'm hoping when we get to Thryn, you guys can have a chat with Jor. And if he's got my axe, great, wonderful. It's a simple, simple matter of giving him some gold, rewarding you guys, great. If he's not found it, hopefully he may have a clue of where it is. If that's the case, you need to come back to me and uh, we'll plot out our next move. I suspect that Leffy remembers this and that axe is worth a fair bit of cash. So my worry is that Leffy will, will, will be trying to do the same thing and retrieve my axe as a, as a token of my shame. Because pride's a very important thing between chieftains. So I'd appreciate it if we got it first. Okay. Indeed. All right. If it can wait till tomorrow, that would be brilliant because I kind of need to uh, sort my spells out. <laughs> <laughs> so for you guys, it's approaching night time. So he, he says, uh, 
you know the rangers won't be awake they they won't be they have their own little gathering circle which will you'll find in the morning um but they'll be tense before we enter the um before we can actually enter the fort itself a fair warning once you get in proximity of the fort you can't draw your weapons you can't draw blood you can't fight with anyone if you do the penalties death and the de- the, the penalties immediate and it's everyone's responsibility to to enforce it God. <laughs> okay. So there's no <laughs> fighting within the within the walls of Thryn. Outside, oh however, is fine, and you'll find that you know that gorge where the axe should be, or if if you know if if Jaws retrieved it for me, great. If we have to go to the gorge, the the gorge is one of those places where we will be vulnerable to to attack. But that's why I've got you guys, and he sort of grins. There's <laughs> so a few scores settled outside then the uh, walls. He nods. He says, I guess it's time for me to... Well, actually, I'll wait till we're um, we're in the tent. I'm sure we'll see a few of the characters in, in there at the, uh, at, the, at the first drinking tent. So you guys pull up and you see this massive fort. I've not revealed it for you, but what I'll do is I'll kind of reveal the, um, the breadth of it and not the interior. So you guys see that there is this just massive fort you guys can only see the front of it um but it's a big wooden building with stone and it's like nude? a giant triangular shape sorry is that guy nude doing the run is it like running nude or something there oh he's not nude he's just in it's beige just clothes <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's, it's just a flesh colored top <laughs> i thought it had been skinny dipping or something he's not been skinny dipping oh. i'm afraid lee <laughs> Um, but you <laughs> you guys can see the front of this magnificent sort of palatial building that looks very, very sort of desolate and ruined. You notice in the distance. Well, can I get perceptions off you all? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, dear. Glad to remember. Bad, bad first roll there. <clears throat> What'd you get? Ah. 12. 16. D24, so our perception. Yep. Yeah. Let's roll 15 plus my perception is 18. 18. <clears throat> so, Ad, you see this giant <clears throat> building and you just think, wow, what like a, what, it's a bit of a mess, but it is, it is impressive. It's certainly fortified. You see sort of crenellations at the top. Um, you just see this giant, magnificent building and, and, and guards sort of stretching out in front of you with a small fortified wall. It looks like this place is primarily just a fortification. It's got no other use. It, it's it's just literally an old fort and a mountain that's gone to wreck, um, and it's slowly being populated. Um, Lee, you were next, weren't you? You got sixteen. You see a scurry of servants and workers slowly rebuilding certain elements, patching up the roof, fixing the locks on the door. Um, lots of servants. Dave, you recognise. You sort of look into the camp as as you're coming by, and you recognise a few people. So you, you see a small campsite with Barabbas and Wilbur. Their cart overtook you. You see the Allmaster's cart in the distance because you guys were slower because you were walking. So the Allmaster's cart is over here. He says, trying to ping. I can't because I've got the reveal tool on. There we go. So you see the old master over here. And you see various servant girls sort of dotted around, like here, mm-hmm. here, etc. And a couple of them you actually recognize. Um, oh, no. A couple of have elven ears. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so they're the ones that came off the ship. Yeah, you, you, could, you could assume that. Um, you don't yeah, see Celine. I'm assuming that. Okay, thank God. <laughs> but you you see these women are the, the simply dressed women who were being disciplined at the side of the water. So, you know, clearly there's been some trading going, slave trading going on here. Um, so you guys pull in. I've not placed you on this map, have I? How rude of me. <laughs> Place you in. But Harold yeah. immediately goes into the near, like, Sped whispers something to Harold and he immediately goes into a different tent. And that's how we get rid of him from today's session. Uh, <laughs> Catch later, um, Harold. 
Yeah. <laughs> and Smed <laughs> says, wow. um, I've, I've got an errand for, for Harold to run. He turns to you guys and he says, we'll be going into this tent. Um, and, and that one's got a small table in. We'll be drinking. We'll be, you know, these tents aren't exactly to size, but I couldn't fit them on the map. So think of these tents as being about five times bigger than they are. So they've got tables in, drinking, etc. So you guys enter one of these nice. Sounds like tents. Kind of tent. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a big tent. It is a Harry Potter tent. <laughs> <laughs> there is, it's a big room. There's lots of drinking. There's a big long table, lots of sort of small stools. Um, there's a fire burning in the center, a big brazier. And there's some people around the room. Um, I'll use your perception checks from before. Um, you notice, Dave, that there is someone you recognize. You're not entirely sure where you recognize them from, but they're, they've got a very moth-eaten sailor's outfit on. And a, a sort of a peaked piratey type hat. Okay. Um, and just the, just the look of him, the disposition rem is very familiar in, in sort of recent memory. A oh, recent memory. In recent memory, yeah. But you don't, re you can't really tell where you recognise him from. <clears throat> um, but like, there's something about him that reminds you of someone. Um, you guys sit down right at the end and there is a wealth of people around you like there are a lot of people sort of crammed in this little space there's probably about 20 people under this tent other than you so it, it's people are really crammed in and it's not long that you sort of sit down that drinks are served to you and sped sort of says well your time's your own tonight boys um but tomorrow morning I want you to seek out those rangers. I'll be safe in here. We've got past the guards. No one can draw a, a sword against me. So feel free to do as you wish on the grounds. Just don't start any fights. Um, and he turns around to you, Lee, and he says, for God's sake, don't start raising dead here. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, asked Svedko, is that left character in this tent anywhere? He looks around and he shakes his head. He says there there aren't any chieftains here. However, there's a couple of people to um, point out. So he points to someone like right on the opposite side, and you see a very large man, incredibly large, probably the largest man you've ever seen. And that goes for the um, the barman who was like seven foot tall. This guy is probably about eight foot five, and he is blue of skin. He looks very sort of human in his face. He's got human facial hair, but there's an icicle hanging off his ear, either like a piercing or something like that. But it is a cold icicle and he is blue and he is mostly naked apart from a loincloth. And he's got a big club on his back. And he's, and Sved says um, that is the bodyguard of um, Carl Carlson the Younger. So I assume Carl's around here somewhere, but I can't see him. Hmm. Um, his name is um valley ice vein and you don't want to get into a fight with him he's the strongest man in norvald valley ice valley out ice vein valley ice vein yeah <laughs> and 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 he he's a giant half giant that uh, no one knows where carl carson picked him up from um but he is a a, a dangerous man um, can I get an intelligence check off you, Ad, or a knowledge? Do you have what knowledge checks do you have? Uh, nature, geography, and dungeoneering. Oh, neither of them will do. Can I get a straight intelligence check from you, Ad? Yeah, yeah. 15, uh, 15. Where's intelligence? Why can't I see intelligence? It's oh. in your skill modifiers. <laughs> uh, 17. 17. Um, so you recognize this guy. He was at Svard. So from your memory, you remember him following um, Carl Carlson around, the younger. Okay. So you, you just, you remember being on a raid and seeing him in the distance, and he literally just crushes people's head between his fingers like he is powerful. Like you've not seen him draw his club. He's yeah. uh, <laughs> he's an absolute monster. He's a badass. Um, yeah, basically. Um, so 
Sved turns to you all and he says, there's some, there's certain people who I don't advise you fight with here. He's one of them. <laughs> he says, there's another man that who, who will kill you. Well, there's two men who are exceedingly dangerous that I've not mentioned. One you've already met. One is Darius. Uh, they call him the Spill uh, because of the blood trail he leaves. He is an exceedingly powerful warrior from abroad. We don't know where Vigo found him. But uh, the two have been very close ever since, and uh, he's he's someone who is is undefeated in combat. The last person is a man called Einar. You'll recognise him because he's covered in in green paint. He he applies that to his skin. He's a human. All the people I've mentioned are human, um, apart from Valley, who's got a bit more in him. Um, he is sworn to Regulf, who is the main competitor to be chieftain. He's his main man, and his nickname is the Troll. And much like trolls, he has a constitution to be reckoned with. I've seen him take arrows in the face. I've seen people try to cut parts off him. He's lost a finger, and the next day he's grown back. For some reason, this man has the regeneration abilities of a troll in human form, and he's exceedingly dangerous. So they're the men I don't advise you to get in the fight, in a fight with. Really, anyone who boasts a title, I'd suggest mm. you avoid. So that was Einar, was it the last one? Yeah, Einar the troll. Wow. Valley Ice Vein and Darius the Spill. He says those three men are, are, are men to avoid. So, if uh, if you get in... sorry, <laughs> sorry. I think Jars might die. <laughs> so. <laughs> Be good. It's not somebody I want to just walk up to and uh, introduce myself to. Oh, bleeding to He says Darius is is very amenable. You've already met Darius, but um, okay. there's a few rumours about him and Vigo being um, more than just friends. He says I don't suggest that you uh, mention them to them. That was it. Okay. I was, I knew there was something with those guys. He says they've known each other for years and years and years, and. Um, they're both of the same disposition, and he sort of like is trying to think of a way to word it de delicately. <laughs> okay. So, well, uh, where, where did you say this Valley Ice Vein was standing? Right on the other end of the table. Like, basically, he's at the other opposite end of the tent, but the tent is kind of like against his back, like a cape. He's kind of like hunched okay. over to be in here. And there's a, a couple of men just like kind of around him drinking. And he's just got basically like a barrel in front of him. And he's just like slowly sipping it. <laughs> but before you do that, can I get a um, perception from you, Dave? Perception from me? Yeah, specifically you. Oh, this is not going to This is not going to end well. Can I just ask, where are our... Uh, tokens. Uh, your tokens are over the tent. In the tent, yeah. Can you see them? I can't, no. But then you where's that? So. One sec. Ah, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, we're just... It's just because yeah, I'm big zoomed map list, right sorry. Yes. Yeah. Right. I've not made a map for the interior of this because I assumed you guys weren't going to fight in here. Um, <laughs> I, I thought I was safe in that assumption, um, but yeah. Um, can I get a perception? So, what's your perception, Dave? I rolled the nineteen plus my five is twenty-four. Cool. The guy you've recognised has started to come over, or there's something you recognise about him, and he's got a parcel in his hand, and he's coming with it outstretched, with a drink in his hand as well. And he sort of extends it and, and begins to pass it to you. Do you accept? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so he gives it to you, and it is basically something wrapped in cloth. It's heavy um, that you've got in your hand. Um, and it's long as well. It's sort of like this, I'd say, sort of long, lo double, double the length of your shoulders and it's like a bundle wrap really tightly and a sort of like a nice cloth, like a silky kind of like blue material, but it's got some, you know, it's got some tarnishes in. It's actually stained. And you feel like something <laughs> hard inside. And, um, and he looks at you and he says, uh, Captain Pye, means you might remember 
my captain, from your uh, from your your dealings. I believe you uh, won a slave from him. Oh fuck me! No, no. <laughs> oh no! I take it to me and Lee see this. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. You, you do. It's it's very obvious. And he uh, he walks away and he says, uh, "Captain Way and Pike sends his regards." And he walks out the tent. Captain oh, Way not, Pike. <clears throat> oh God, I'm gonna have to unbox this, aren't I? You might not want to open that here, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it away from us. Can I tell you what? Then how about this? Um, I carry my bundle and take it to the other side of this horse cart over here to unwrap it. Have a look inside it. Yeah. So as you unravel you start to notice the hilt of an axe and it's covered in blood. Mm. And as you unwrap it further and further, you realize it's one of the throwing axes um, that are part of the set of throwing axes you had previously. Um, the material is the ripped dress of Celine. I, you know, I, tell oh, you shit. I, arm or <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were about to un unwrap an arm then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Um, God, you're cold, you are, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled for it and everything. That guy has tracking dogs. Like, you really think he would have let you get away with a slave. He'd just wait two days and then send a couple of, you know, people after her. Should not let her go. <laughs> yeah. At least you got my axe back, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had your axe back. <laughs> um, but well, it's very clearly a, a message. <clears throat> like, oh, so he, did, um, did he cheat he on his deal axe. then? Did he cheat <laughs> on his deal? Because did you beat him in a axe throwing thing? Was it? I did. No, and... Lee, Lee beat him in a card game. That was oh, Lee beat him in a card game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's going back on his deal then. Wow, there's only one thing for that if we ever come across him again, then, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, he actually. Yes, he has. He's he's, he's um he's broke his he's broke the deal, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. To be fair, he didn't seem the most no, the honest of characters, anyway, did he? Really, mm -hmm. he's a slaver. Yeah, oh, he man, is. So, so he's dead, and I've got an axe again. Well, you don't know whether she's dead or not. It's just it's just an axe that there's clearly some blood stains on it. There's blood stains on this dress. But it's definitely my axe. See, why would he send you that? Is that like a come come get her if you think you can? I'm wondering that. Wondering if it's yeah, it's a it's like uh, we have it. Like so in that case then... ba baiting you. <laughs> Say again, sorry. He's baiting you. Yeah, I'm wondering that and I'm thought so that guy is that guy is just up to up and ran off, hasn't he? Yeah. So, do you want to give me a? Well, I think he's probably walked out of sight now. You've ducked behind that cart, but it's definitely snowed on these mountains. So there is a there is a bit of a light snow. So there might be footsteps on the ground, for example. Okay. Um, but it might be difficult to pick his up. Yeah. I'm trying to think of oh man, I don't know what to do here. I might I tell you what, I'll come back into the I'll I'll um <clears throat> I'll does any I'll tell you what, I've got an idea. Right. Mm. I'll um unwrap unwrap <coughs> the axe. I'll put the axe back in my inventory. Mm. And we are still allowed weapons on us, aren't we? As long as, long as we yeah, don't Yeah, yeah. No, no guards taking everything off you. They've just sort of eyeballed you as you went by. You've just been told not to draw your weapon and attack anybody. Right. Or punch them, or, or basically physical violence is, is banned in right. this area. So are the people allowed to, you know, touch each other, hold hands, that type of thing? <laughs> Accidentally <laughs> fall ill. <laughs> Um, there's there's nothing again. You've only literally been told that that physical violence and combat is a is a no no. I Aggressive see. actions, etc. Okay, okay. Well, so it's like I'll brush against someone as I walk past them wouldn't be noticed. No, probably not. But Excellent. 
I mean, you know, <laughs> if, that, if that person falls to the ground and starts bleeding from the mouth, they may they may Come suspect on. you for something. <laughs> Come on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just brushed against him. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. Let, let's let's not tempt that with the troll, the spill, and the half joint yeah. geezer in, in there. Mm. <laughs> just just weighing up my options. That's all. Just weighing them up. Mm. Um, okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll put my axe back in my inventory and I'll bundle the dress back up and I'll put it away as well. <clears throat> Don't we yeah. need to go find, um, I forgot his name already, these guys that may have the axe? Yeah, so, so Jaw the Ranger, um, you've been instructed to find him, however, that'll be in the morning. Okay. You guys are kind of expected to drink and sleep in this big tent. Okay. Cool. With right. all these other dudes. Well, what was he again? Jaw. 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 Right. He's one of the rangers. I'll go speak to my good friend, Batty Artis. Barabbas. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I swear to God, I thought I had it then. <laughs> I really need to write his name down. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, you, you come to him, he's there in his robes, warming himself by the fire. He's sort of trying to get the attention of a guard with like, oh, I've got lovely trinkets, and the guard's just ignoring him, and he's like huffing and puffing because like, people are ignoring him. He can't seem to sell crap here. And he turns around to Wilbur, and he's like, you're asleep again, <laughs> to the guy on the cart. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll um, swagger up to Barabbas. Oh, a valued customer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what can I help you with? I've got trinkets. I've got um, things of delight. I've got some new books. I am very well aware of what you have, man. It's all my money. Um... <clears throat> he laughs. <laughs> and he says, uh, discounts for a good customer. <laughs> um, that, that, I need a bit of information of you first, Barabbas. <clears throat> He says inf um, information is a is a trading commodity. <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing. Does that does the trade involve more gold? <laughs> he says for you, the first piece of information is free. The second oh, is heavily good. discounted because of a uh, such a good customer you are. Well, I appreciate that, Barabbas. Thank you very much. I need to know. <laughs> A couple of things. Now we'll pay for the second one. He knows. Should I, should I have to? First of all, I need to know: is there is there a man or woman around here who owns tracking dogs? He sort of like shakes his head a little bit, and he says, "The only person who's brought dogs is Mag of Hindle, the chieftain." He says the the only I, I'm not sure if they're his, but he seems to have hired someone to protect him. They're a bit low on men up there, so he's 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 hired a, a local slaver trader person who's brought a crew and some dogs. <clears throat> they brought <clears throat> some of the servants as well, and he points to one of the uh, the women. And he says, have you sampled from the Elven Delights? And he waggles his eyebrows. <laughs> um, <laughs> you creepy old man, you are, Barabbas. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. But I like you. Um, <laughs> so, the second piece of information, which should be at a heavily discounted price. <clears throat> Roll me charisma. Oh, God. <laughs> See how heavily please. discounted this is. Please tell um, me. Do you want to give me a face um, skill, like diplomacy, etc.? I have a diploma. I have diplomacy. Yeah. I roll just... eighteen. Yeah. And yeah, so you your ask for heavily discounted goes down well. He sort of chuckles, and he says, uh, "Of course, for my favorite patron." <laughs> I wasn't quick, expecting 
Like, just got a quick question, Paris. Um, yeah, just sure. Before we go you know these maps that you have, are they movable or do they just sort of like stay on the left-hand side? Like, is it possible to move more centre of the screen? Um, you should have the window scroll bars left and right. If you yeah, the but it's, it, it kind of sticks. You have to zoom out quite a bit for it to... <clears throat> But then it goes more towards the left. You can't really move it to the middle, can you? That's the only issue. Um, what I would recommend, Lee, is zoom in a bit. And yeah, then you've got I, to I have, have these bars. But if you zoom out, it, it goes hard to the left. The only thing I can think of is you can, on the right hand side, you've got the three lines, which is like the tab for the extra stuff. Mm. I would minimize that. And then it puts it all straight in the center of your screen. Is that no, better? it doesn't. It doesn't move the map at all. Yeah, it's all right. I'll I'll, I'll think, try and think of something at another okay, point. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't make the program. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we may have to make you some maps, Dave. Fair enough. <laughs> sorry. So, Dave, you're going to ask your second question. Uh, yeah. Where? May I find this? Did you say May? Mag May. of Hindle. Mag, you know Mag. Mag. He's the chieftain of the village you came from. Read. Yeah, I can't even read my own writing. Um, <laughs> um, it was Captain. Hang on, it was it was Captain Way and Pike. One, two. He's Way and Pike. That's his name. Way and first name, Ooh. surname Pike. Let's go. Oh, his first name is Way and his second name is Pike. Okay. Yeah. They all had a very distinct uniform. That's why you recognized that that's what you found familiar about the guy, the way he dressed, the sort of the black leather, the peaked hat. Cool. The right. Clothes. They're all, you know. Yeah. Okay. In that case, then, since he's the only man with the dogs, no one else here in the village has dogs or tracking ability. So I asked Barabbas. <clears throat> Barabbas. You wouldn't by any chance know where Mag from Hindle and his cronies, Captain Way and Pike, Captain Way Pike, <clears throat> is hiding. Hiding? Oh, they're, where they're, are they're not hiding. They're, he, he sort of points. He, he literally points up here. He says, um, up there. <laughs> you, see, you see that? Older gentleman trying to carouse with that young elven woman. Mm -hmm. That's that's, and you immediately recognise your old chieftain, Mag. There, he's got two armed guards next to him, but other than that, you can't really see anyone else in the camp. Um, he says, um, "I believe the the dogs and the the, uh, and I believe whatever his name is, the the slaver guy. I'm not entirely sure on his name and and his cronies. They're all out at the moment. They're." They're doing something as something for another chieftain, right? Okay, thank you, Barabbas. You've been most helpful. Mm. He nods. He puts out his hand. He says, uh, "A copper for a nice piece of information is uh, is always appreciated." <laughs> a copper. Okay, that was way cheaper than I thought it'd be. Um. I don't say he, he, he says information's normally a silver. Special information is normally a gold, but the best information is priceless. Best information. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I'm in the copy. <laughs> <laughs> takes it. And he nods and he says, if you ever fancy trading in any commodities, come my way. Okay. Well I buy, I sell, I you know. Well, have you got any new stock? Where are this? He cocks his head. He says, I've got a few new things. What did you have in mind? Um, have you got... I know you don't work in the way of potions, but do you have any potions or elixirs? He shakes his head. He says, I don't deal in magic okay. or alchemy. I thought you didn't. So what are your new books about? He says, "I've got a beautiful tome, and it's called the uh, it's called the Maidens of Norveld." 
Sounds like a top shelf tome, that does. (laughs) (laughs) He says it's a book about the female gods of Norveld. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm not going to buy that. So, (laughs) not yet, anyway. I need to go get drunk in a tent. Thank you, Barabbas. <laughs> he nods. Happy drinking. <clears throat> Happy drinking, Barabbas. And uh, as I walk past, I tap, I tap him, what's his face on the th- on the foot, and then walk back into the tent. Whilst I'm doing that, I'm eyeballing these guys. Yeah. Um, can you give me a perception as you tap Wilbur? Okay. That's a 19. I roll. Uh... I need to roll another dice. Well, yeah. You um, know, you notice as you sort of tap him that he kind of shuffles a bit, and you can see that he's sleeping on a sword and a dagger, and like just underneath his hand was his dagger, and just as you came up and tapped him, and he woke up like his hand like went to the dagger, and then he looked at you, and then he sort of withdrew his hand. Okay, <laughs> he's on the ball. Oh, yeah, he's mm. he might be he might be sleep sleeping. But, okay. So uh, yeah, as Dave uh, Angelus comes back and sits back in the tent, I just look up to go. Everything all right? I'll go okay. That package. I'll, uh, can I whisper it into? Can I whisper into? Oh, yeah. Everything that's going on, but hopefully without anyone kind of hearing, just letting him know what's what, what the trick is. Yeah. Okay. Um, do a sneak attack, do a roll a sneak or something. I would roll, I would roll just a straight charisma for like a discretion okay. check, if that makes sense. So d20 plus your charisma. Okay, d20. That is a 16. Um, plus my charisma. I have yeah. no charisma. Oh, no, that's my charisma. Is it the base modern adding on to that? Yeah, please. That's just plus one, so 17. Yeah. So it's a relatively loud bar, so that kind of like drowns out. I say bar tent. It's relatively loud in there, so it drowns out most of the noise. But you kind of see Sved's wig- ear wigging. Mm. So he can hear. Okay. Um, but other than that, other people aren't paying you any mind. Cool. Mm. So now you're on the same page as me now, Wolf. Cool. Um, so... Where are we sleeping tonight? <clears throat> Where are uh, you? I, I uh, shout over to Svet, <laughs> just beckon him, asking like, "What? What's the uh, arrangements for this evening?" He says it's warm, it's dry, and he slaps on the table and he slaps on the chairs. He says, "Push two of these babies together." You're right. Okay, right. So um... you, you lads act like you've not slept it rough before. <laughs> many a time, many a time. In the so, snow. Would this be um, <laughs> not too much of a distraction for me to just read through one of these books? Yeah, sure. Um, it will take you about an hour to, to pour through one if you're downtime. But yeah, you can make a start. Which one are you going to read? Uh, the Trolls, Orcs, Giants and Goblins. Excellent. I'm going to, I'm going to go create the next. I'm literally going to just say some sweet nothings to next uh, yeah. and apologise for the lack of uh, killing today <laughs> <laughs> as you as you pray Lee you start getting a bit of a vision Ooh. Um, Ooh. so you start seeing in your mind the marble coffin in the tomb that you the, the cairn that you guys we're in and there's cracking on the marble coffin or sarcophagus the the big marble plinth and you kind of see a hand like easing out and easing out and and the dark spirit sort of coming up and in wrapping the hand and forming flesh and and you see like claws coming up and you hear like whispers of like rise rise and then all of a sudden you hear a voice and it's a voice of, of a man and he's going, God, I wish, um, I wish Vigo hadn't ordered me to do this. This place gives me the creeps. And he takes the ring with the big, um, 
onyx stone and he sort of puts it down and hesitantly leaves and the hand retreats and the marble heals itself like nothing ever happened. Nice. Nice. Oh. Where that's gone then. <laughs> nice. And you kind of, just with your last elements of the vision, um, you hear like shovels digging and the tiny light that's in the crypt starts disappearing and fading as they're, they're burying the cairn back under. Okay. I totally I just clicked that you gave him the ring back, didn't you, to put back last, last time we played. Yeah. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. Mm. Okay, so you're not in the in the poop for that anymore, then. No, no, you, no I'm all right. You, you feel like Nex is... It's not a warm energy. Like Mostly it's kind of like a cold, hollow, like pressing. You, you've not really felt her angry yet, or him angry yet. You, you don't really know the gender of Nex. Um, but you kind of hear the whisper subside and you kind of feel a, a, a gentle silence, like a sereneness about you, like you've done the right thing. Right, okay. <clears throat> That's good to know. Gnarly. Mm. I, will, I will return to the, the uh, tent area, shivering like anything. You know, got this massive <laughs> winter coat on. <laughs> it is cold out there and it's getting to nightfall. Mm. So you come back and begin to warm up. You've spent about an hour out there, Lee, if you mm. would completed your prayers. The, the visions came to you very slowly. Um, Ad, you'd have finished your book. Dave, what have you been doing in this time? Just drinking and... Relaxing. Yeah, dr- drinking and plotting. Yeah. And, uh, so, brooding. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I'd... brooding. Yeah. Night begins to fall. And it's not before long that a couple of people exit the tent. It gets a lot less crowded in here. Lots of people sort of get bedrolls out. Other people leave and set up their own tents as well. Um, but the people are still restocking the the brazier. Sved literally takes his bedroll, plonks it on the table, and you notice that other men who'd already started to do that begin to roll their bedrolls up, see that, seeing that it's Sved, clear a space for him and sort of like jog on. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Um. I'll knock back the last of my drink then, and uh, I'll do the same. Yeah. Yeah. They've they've cleared quite a significant portion of the table for you guys to lie down on. They're not quite as wide as a man. Um. But you can kind of comfortably be on it, kind of diagonally. This is where being short in game really helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Five foot. Is it, it, it's probably about a four foot and a half table to five foot in certain places. It's it's a very roughly carved table, so I think you could probably find a nice comfortable fit for yourself. Lee. Nice. All right. So see. yeah, better get my bed roll out then, Anta, and get get mm. comfy. Definitely. Um, so taking the cue, oh my god, no, I wouldn't have known. Doesn't matter. I was going to oh, say okay. taking a cue from old what's his name in the wagon having his hand on his dagger for the night. I was like, <laughs> I might do that, but I don't know about it, so I won't. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, Sved does sort of like say who's taking first watch before he goes down to sleep. He says it's still worth someone waking up in case someone takes their valuables. Right. Okay. First watch, would this be just around our area or outside this tent? No, he says just someone to stay awake and maybe have a drink and just kind of relax and just make sure no one takes our bags. Okay, right. I'll do it. I'll take first watch. Right, wake (laughs) us up when you need to uh, sleep and I'll uh, take second watch. Cool. Yeah, but it's easy when you're on watch, mate. Everyone's scared. (laughs) (laughs) Cover up all your skin. Cover it all up. I, I would make you roll perceptions, but really nothing happens. This is a really safe place area. No one's going to really try and attempt to start a fight because no one wants to risk death, particularly f- the fact that it's it's forced, it's made to be enforced by everyone. And Sved's a, a hard-ass chieftain, so no one really bothers you. Um, so, yeah, so morning begins. Mm-hmm. Okay, so can we grab food in this tent this morning? No, there's drink, but there is no food no in food. this tent. You're gonna have to dig into your rations. Oh, so if I wander outside, there's nowhere I can look to. Oh, I know where we can get food. You can try and find somewhere for food. 
I'll, uh, I'll yeah. take a wander outside the tent and have a look around. And in fact, I'll I'll bimble over to old uh, Barabbas. Yeah, <laughs> he seems to be in the know. <laughs> I'll uh, ask ask him. As 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 I'd wait, as, to get I'd... a nice lunch, breakfast even. Yeah. He's uh, grilling what looks like a rabbit on there, and he says, uh, "Wilbur's been out hunting this morning." Um, got me a got me a brace of rabbits. Oh, nice! He How sort much? of looks at, at, at you two hungry men, and he's going to say, "I'm going to start charging you guys at some point for this." <laughs> and he says, "Sit down," and you know, just just kind of. He takes out a stew pot, and he says, "Any of you guys good at cooking?" Oh, uh, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not particularly skilled in cooking, but say, or would that be under craft? No, it doesn't. Do it. Um, um, it would. It would be a, like a profession or a, you know, something like that. I don't think any of you guys have picked any sort no. of cookery-based no. skills <laughs> or given yourself something like that. I mean, you could pretend, and and we'll see what happens. But um... <laughs> um, let's not kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so, give it a go. Why not? I'll, well, I'll have a crack at cooking one of these. I bet you do it all the time, Brabus. Have a sit he, down. I'll have a go. He he nods and he says, um, he says, I've got a stew pot and some vegetables. There you go. Away you go. And he sort of like sits back and uh, yeah. Okay. I can always give it my magic um, touch. So I guess I. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you want to say peel a rabbit by skin a rabbit? <laughs> Do you want? Do you want to give me a d twenty um, minus four plus your intelligence, please? Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, intelligence. Oh, not too bad. Fourteen. Fourteen. Well, I say not too bad. <laughs> you make a very mushy rabbit stew. It's very edible. It's the rabbits cooked oh, cool. quite nicely, um, but that you put the vegetables in at the same time, so it is. It is very. Mush. It's more like a rabbit soup than a rabbit stew. Okay. Um, it's it's a passable meal. It's Barabbas doesn't seem unhappy with it. He sort of eats it happily, and and you know, yeah, everything's fine. You've you've made a, a passable rabbit stew. Excellent. Nice. Well done. <laughs> um, who's still in? Giles is still in the tent, isn't he? Uh, me, I, 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 I'm, I'm asleep. Able. You're still asleep. <laughs> You're sleeping in late. That's true. You did say <laughs> character slept in late. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll grab a bowl, walk mm. back into the tent, and give uh, Giles a kick in the leg. <laughs> you go. I'll have that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Today you're playing you in real life, Lee. <laughs> sleeping in late. Uh, I'll just give him I'll a little bow ooh. as I give it to him. <laughs> Best thing about morning is the four to lovely be fair, you've spells. Me enough times. Yeah. <laughs> I need to look after you. Um, healing. Does anyone have healing that needs doing? Yeah, uh, I'm okay. 10 HP at the minute. I'm on 17. I'm I'm good. So my okay, HP... You guys wouldn't have healed overnight. You'd heal the next night. Sorry, Lee, what were you going to say? My HP was 11. Uh, my max HP is 13. So um, you could say that heals the next night. So the night after. Yeah, so the day, the, the night after, immediately after combat, you don't heal anything. You need a day of uh, what is essentially rest before you okay. start healing. Right. So, so nothing this morning. Then tomorrow morning. No, but tomorrow morning you would, provided yeah. you don't get into combat where you get injured today. Cool. Okay. Right. So, what's the plan? We need to uh, ask around for these rangers or ranger. Well, Anyone fancy wander around camp. Yeah, I'll come with you. I'll uh, wander over to um, what's his name. Mag, yeah. Magnus, Mag, Mag. Oh yeah, yeah Mag of of Hindle. So, yeah. um, sorry. The reason why I've moved them in the tent is because they are not awake yet. Okay. Um, the two okay. guards are still there. They've switched positions. Um, they're looking pretty tired, and they sort of say halt, 
you are entering the tent. You are uh, in the vicinity of the tent of Mag of Hindle. So, uh, is is Mag up? Is he awake? One of them smiles and say, "Mag is is definitely up." Oh God! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the other one uh, turns and look at Dave and and says, "Are jealous?" Oh no! <laughs> well, um. Who wants to know? He pulls off his his iron helmet, and you you remember him as a guy called. Um, he's going to be another Bjorn, okay. commonest name in in Norvald. Um, so you know him as as Bjorn. You knew him as little Bjorn. He was a kid who followed around your. Um, troop, if you will, your your gang. He never got really involved in any the hardcore stuff, but he did like little thefts and things like that. And um he sort of bailed out when things got a bit serious. Right, okay. Well done. <clears throat> By the gods, little Bjorn. He says uh not so little anymore. I hear you got into some trouble. I'm always in trouble, little Bjorn. <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> and he says, uh, you want to be careful around Mag. Well, he wasn't very happy with uh, with the hounds by the, when you left. Uh, they got in, they got into some real serious stuff and, and half of them were hanged outside of the village walls. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh right okay <clears throat> so um mm. they killed a guard apparently <laughs> who's guard he nods inside he says one of us the hounds killed the guard and that's your fault angelus what's i say and is is that your fault angelus <laughs> No. <laughs> he says it was just after you left. Mm. He says they bit off more than they could chew. I knew they would. Damn hounds. Always hungry. Oh, hang on. <laughs> was this your crew? Yeah. Okay, right. Oh, mate. <clears throat> <laughs> Should we fun. not be hanging around this tent particularly? Then? <laughs> We're safe in here. Yeah. That's truly um, very safe in here. Yeah, we are we are okay in here because no one no one will start a fire, will they? So, mm. so well. Bjorn, save us uh, disturbing Mag. Probably don't want to disturb him at all, really. Uh, <laughs> have you heard of a ranger called Jaw? He says rangers. He says there's loads of rangers around here. They were all in that fort until we we got them to clear out. Um, we got the construction crews in. I say we. Um, Carl and Regulf did. Um, the Rangers, I, I believe, they're south of of this place. They they have a little encampment just left of the fort. I see him. Okay. Right, yeah. So, can I see that from where we are looking over? Or... Yeah. 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 He says, "I don't know any names, but there's some Rangers there." That's great. Thanks. Hmm. He sort of nods his head and then looks a bit sheepish and puts his helmet back on and starts looking serious again as the other guard scowls at him. Hmm. Can I uh, can I very quickly like kind of wander up a bit closer to Little Bjorn and just mm. um, <clears throat> kind of just I'll just say to Little Bjorn, um, we go way back, right? He nods his head very slowly. So I need you. I need you to do me a favor. He says, I'm I'm on the straight and narrow now. No, no, no. no. I won't would ask you to do anything on the ward. I wouldn't want to threaten your job. You seem to have got yourself in the right place. Mm. I just need you to tell me something if something happens. Mm. Is that all right? Uh, can I get a diplomacy, please? You're persuading him to do something. He's... <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> okay, diplomacy six. Here we go. 
That is 13. So you know, I've got 13. Plus my six is 19. He sort of narrows oh. his eyes and he says he, he, it depends, but um, I'd like, you know, you're a good friend of mine. I'd like to help you the best I can, but like you say, I can't do anything that threatens my job or role. So let's hear what you have to say to me first and then we'll we'll, we'll see if I can I can let you know. I need you to let me know. <clears throat> When Captain Way and Way Pike comes back into the encampment, I need to know where he is. And I also need to know if he has a woman with him. She's probably injured. I just need to know where they are. Can you do he, that? He sort of cocks his head and he says, um, Way and was also looking for rangers. Really? He he nods. He he says, um, apparently he didn't have much luck with them, so he sent out the hounds, but he was talking about how there's nothing to track, or he he, he, he sort of shook his head. He, he said, I'm not sure when he'll be back, but he'll, he'll be back before the moot starts. Interesting. Thank you, Little Bjorn. Thank you, Little Bjorn. He he says, um, two day, two days hence from now, the the moot and the feast starts. He'll be he'll be back. Everyone will be back. Good to know. Well, if by any chance they seem to come back, before then, would you mind letting me know one way or another? Please. He he, he nods and he says the hour may not be appropriate because. And he sort of like points yeah. to himself. He's a guard. Yeah. He says, but if I have some spare time, which is unlikely, or maybe I'll send a, maybe I'll send a camp follower to you. I mean, that sounds great. Though. I mean, fair enough. So at the end of every day, if I'm nearby, I'll come and say hello mm. for all time's sake. And we'll share a mead. He says, I can't drink. He says, you I can't are... drink. Really on the straight and narrow when you're making this difficult. <laughs> <laughs> he chuckles. He says, I'm I'm guard to the Yarl, uh, to the chieftain. Chieftain at the moment. Um <laughs> Did you say that? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it just does a tap me axe. No, no, no. <laughs> um <so. laughs> Very, very cool of you. Thank you, thank you for your help, and it's good to see you again. He nods. Mm. Uh, okay, gentlemen, fancy over. a wonder down to these rangers? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, As Giles finished his breakfast. Oh God. Oh yeah. He's done there, isn't he? <laughs> Giles has gone, <laughs> had his out. breakfast and fell back to sleep. You better wake him back up. <laughs> He's, like, he's had a busy couple of days using all his spells up and I had to deal That's with, uh, you know, trolls and stuff, not knowing what to do when you guys have been is, disappearing. Is there, a, is there anything found around this camp that's akin to coffee? <laughs> I've, got, I've just got the, I've got the best idea. I'll just, but just, but before I get to the tent, I'm going to scoop up some snow. Mm. <laughs> I'll stay outside. You're not going to cut off <laughs> someone's face and make another snowman, are you, Dave? No, 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 no. No, no I'm just going to wander in and uh, go up to Giles. Mm. Give Giles a kick. Yeah. Do, do, you, do, you, do you wake up, Giles? Oh, yeah, I wake up. I wake up and give you the dirtiest look you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, are you awake, Giles? Yeah. Yes. Yes, oh, I'm God. awake. Just the snow on him. <laughs> <laughs> Start to reach out towards Angelus's arm. <laughs> Thankfully, miss. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. I said, "Come on, Giles. We got we got work to do." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Um, <laughs> can can we? Go up to these stealthily and have a listen on what they might be chatting about. What the rangers or yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Give us some stealth rolls, please. Oh, no stealth. Do I even have stealth? Oh. Hey, Matt, you stay back a Minus one. Let me give it a roll. My roll's new dice. Dice. Eleven. I rolled a one. Roll new dice. <laughs> new dice roll, thirteen. Okay, cool. Seventeen. God oh, damn. nice. Damn. Yeah, that's why seventeen. <clears throat> So you guys kind of wander over and surprisingly one of them turns and sort of acknowledges you guys who are kind of like looking like you're trying to creep through the trees. Um, but Lee sort of wanders in completely unnoticed. Um, so yeah, so it, it works out well for Giles. Damn it. Nice. <laughs> Do I overhear them say anything? Um, no, not really. They're talking about rangery stuff. They're talking about the tracking of deers. They're they're talking about how many deer have been hunted since people have arrived. They're talking about perhaps scaring off one of the stags because he hasn't passed on his genes yet. They're talking about quite a, a, a few like deery animal based things. They're talking about the location of wolves and bears and you know, I think the most useful thing you hear is that there's a, a wolf encampment that's a wolf encampment there's wolves migrating to the south so they're they're running just south of the fort at the moment so they probably don't advise that people go there and they're talking about maybe initial you know initializing some sort of warning to the chieftains okay. it's really boring talk okay so i'm just going to wander back don't to hear the... anyone mention names or anything or... um yeah, I suppose actually you, you you do Lee, you do hear names. Um two of them you actually recognize. So you recognize the two rangers who you helped. So um Halvor and Kel are the two rangers you helped earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh sorry, Halvor and Gary were the two rangers you heard, you you helped earlier. There's another one called Kel there and there's an older one that they haven't mentioned his name yet but they all keep keep you know referring everything to him isn't Kel one of the guys that we need to speak to was that am i Jaw, getting that jaw jaw was the to. person that you oh. need to speak to okay so we don't know if this other guy could potentially be jaw then okay mm. okay are these guys likely to take offend if i was just to walk up to them I think you're already. Uh, there again, I don't right? think you know that, but you've met two of them before. Okay. Oh, in that case, I'm just gonna go. Up. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Uh, they sort of turn and look maybe. at you, and they say, um, "How can we help you? What's the problem?" I just thought I'd uh, pop up and introduce myself. I'm Giles. You are. So Gary and Halvor give you a look because they already know you. Obviously, you guys <laughs> and, are. Uh, <laughs> Um, the other one nods and says, Kel, and uh, okay. the old guy sort of turns around and looks at you and he says, um, I'm the uh, the head ranger. My name's Jaw. Uh, yeah. What can we do? Nice to meet Rarely you, Rarely people wander up to rangers and start talking with us. Well, uh, we are here um, on uh, business and I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I understand as well that uh, uh, you might be a person I need to speak to. In regards to an axe. He says, what sort of axe? A big uh, one. Uh, uh, yeah, a big one. Uh, <laughs> one that uh, was um, oh, used to belong to Sved. He sort of gives a bit of a smirk and he says, that old Bette, I remember that when I was uh, when I was a lot younger than I was now. Sved drunk throwing his axe into the gorge and he sort of like takes his head back and he roars with laughter. <laughs> And he says, Sved the fair. When he was younger, he was more Sved the fool. <laughs> oh, I, I really? <laughs> would love to hear more about this. Do you uh, know if that axe was ever found? It's just uh, Sved's uh, quite attached to it and uh, would like it back. He says it's very unlikely that Sved's going to get that axe back. Um, I did find out where it was, and it's buried in a in a, in a rock in the gorge. Only that particular area is, shall we say, the spirits there of the forest and of the earth. Okay. The 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 sort of the fey creatures that live around here, the the the, the brownies, they're a, a diminutive folk. 
they worship the the spirit of stone right that's on a small pool with uh, that's on a small island in the gorge i believe his axe is is buried there is, is you can see rock it prominently in the rock okay he, he, he says it's a large rock okay the one that's worshipped by the brownies so it split the rock that's worshipped by these brownies. It's buried within it, but okay. it's, it's not split it. It's, it's buried within. He he says it's not a rock eyed approach. Okay. Do, well, do you do you think this will have annoyed the brownies? He shouts. He, sh <laughs> he, he sort of like cocks his head and and shakes it and and he says the if anything I I think it's kind of like a new trinket that I I think if the rock was displeased the axe wouldn't be there it must be a very special axe okay but forest spirits and spirits of the earth and spirits of elements they they don't give up things like that likely okay are these spirits friendly or um they ain't gonna be friendly i think i'll uh, or, I, i'm gonna walk uh, away and uh, go find um angelus and oof um and we lay this all back to them. We're with you. Oh yeah, we're yeah. They, they were kind of like trying to sneak around. They are there. Down in, here, here, down mm. here. You've not moved your counter, Lee. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so you were here. I've moved you, Lee. I've moved myself. All right, we get things stuff. Why, why are they so far away from me? <laughs> um. So in regards to whether the spirits are friendly or not, he he says I've I've never been hurt by a. Uh, an elemental spirit. However, it pays not to to anger one. Is there was a like in particular. He says rare magical weapons, items, um, special special trinkets of of steel and and iron. So there, there may be a chance to trade his axe back. He 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 nods. Maybe we should uh, tell Sved this, see if Sved's got anything that we can potentially trade. He might have an idea, a plan here. Yeah. But it's his accident in the day. He he says that the brownies might have a bit more information for you. They they live just outside of the, the island. You can find them in their, their small hovels underneath the trees. They're a shy folk. They're an incredibly shy folk. But they may answer if you call. worth it if if they're not going to attack us outright it's always worth a try isn't it he nods he says i don't suggest you get into battle with the spirits of the earth they're old souls powerful souls an ogre once strayed onto the island and was split in two jeez <laughs> all right okay. well. So, do you reckon we should go and uh, talk to them? Talk to the spirits. Oh, sorry. He he nods and he says, um, "They're north of here. You can't miss the gorge. Sved will know where it is. Um, the only problem is you have to climb down into it, which it's a rocky climb. It takes quite a lot of skill." to to get down there I, I i struggle at my age but uh kel's the best climber and he can make it down but i wouldn't recommend taking taking any other people there without some serious gear wonder if um a rabbit has climbing gear <laughs> Only climbing gear <laughs> yeah should, well should we speak to sved first um I tell you what, you can go speak to Sven, get the idea of where, where we're going, and I'll go speak to Barabbas about any road because he likes me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'll uh, relay the uh, inf info to Sved and see if he has any uh, come over with thoughts you. On, on getting it back. So oh. when you tell him, how do, how do you tell him? Sorry, Ad. Uh, so I'll just say to him that we spoke to the rangers and his axe is down in the gorge, lodged in the rock. Um and the, the the brownies might trade for his axe. 
but it has to be something quite significant. Oh, he kind of turns and he says, "Drat." <laughs> I might have something of significance we can trade. Sorry, but I'm not there. No mind. Ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> He 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 says, um, "I'm I'm I'm not sure what those fey creatures would want in replacement for the axe." Um, he 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 sort of says to you, it, "It's probably best to ask them first. Creatures of fey can be very mischievous. Okay. It might be best to just ask them and then return to me and see." Because I'll 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 have to um, yeah he he nods he says I'll have to negotiate for something I I can't imagine what on earth they'd want they're they're mysterious creatures the only thing you know I have gold but I I don't think that's going to cut it okay cool I'll go and catch up with uh, <laughs> Ulf not Ulf <laughs> Angela <laughs> <laughs> you're Ulf <laughs> you're catching up with yourself <laughs> oh dear. It's always good to catch up with yourself. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, with you catching up, have you? Did you just? I'm just. I'm just trying to. I'm just wondering your mid conversation. I suppose. Oh yeah, um, true. So, uh, Bill, Barabbas, your favourite customer's back. <laughs> he um he opens his arms and he says, "Not to eat more of my breakfast, I hope." <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he chuckles, but simultaneously frowns a bit. <laughs> um, okay. Um, if we can turn this fan upside down, <laughs> Sorry, you can with money, apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I, I basically turn around to Barabbas and go, "You got any, uh, got any climbing gear by any chance?" He looks at you and he says. Um... I have just the thing. Of course you do. Bear of course trap. you do. <laughs> <laughs> he says for you, I may need an hour, but for you, I could probably assemble a, a magnificent kit of crampons, pintons, ropes, and tools oh, that'll okay. help you with climbing, including what? a couple of small harnesses for your compatriots to go climbing. I hear there's a beautiful gorge nearby. It's lovely mm -hmm. weather. May interest you in some picnicking items as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have mugs, plates, knives, forks. I He's could whip you up a hamper. <laughs> oh, nice. Maybe a bottle of wine to share with your elven friends. How much is sure. the bottle of wine? <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, how much is your hamper? <laughs> it's like one of those Christmas hampers. <laughs> he he says for you ten silver. Fucking out. I mean, all right. <laughs> <laughs> ten silver for the hamper. <clears throat> eight hundred co uh, eight eight hundred copper or eight eight eighty gold for the climbing gear. Eighty gold. Eighty gold for the climbing gear. Let's see what God I've got. For the climbing gear. He, he would, uh, yeah, I need to go hard on that, mate. I'm getting very quickly skinned. Um, what do you want me to buy it? How much gold do you got? Um, altogether, 128. Yeah, you oh. buy it. <laughs> so that'd be 83 gold, basically, for the climber's kit and the hamper. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pay for that. We'll get it back at some point. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> 83. I mean, just in case you don't, how about I chuck in 40 towards it? I'll put in 40 then. No, no, how much? that's more than we need. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's more than we need. Barabbas um, will take it. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, if you want to split it three ways, that's fine. But I'll, I was just gonna give Dave a break from uh, all that cash that he's been spending recently. Oh, um, thanks, man. Okay. That's very nice of Giles to do that. Well, you know, he he has his moments. Uh, that just uh, don't expect anything else from him. So if, if I pay, I'll, that... I'll, I'll pay twenty eight then. And... Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So so he 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 says um, you can come back to me 
in an hour, or you can wait with uh, wait, wait with me while Wilbur gets the um, stuff together from the cart. And um, he sort of waves someone down, like a like just a sort of a passing by servant, like one of the 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 women with like food in her hands and he sort of like brings her over whispers something to her ear gives her some coin and she goes away and if you guys are waiting there you just know are bobbing back and forth with little packages to him and he's unwrapping it and there's some pintons in there and he's you know he's sort of slowly assembling this this climbers kit for you and he okay. he's he's sort of talking to you and he says now I've got a, a, enough so one of you can do the climbing nailing in the pintons and and crampons um the rest of you just be able to follow by rope and harness so only one of you needs to do the meat of the climbing good job because i can of you not just kind climb. of swing on yeah i think that'd be me won't you i think my dex is mm. quite good yeah what is you've your got next day? you've got a climb actual skill have you not you've not got a climb skill i have got a climb skill yeah my climb skill's not good mine's five it looks like um, no, you're you're a climber, then, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, yes. So, what we're paying 28 each, were we? Yeah. No, but, yeah, 28 each. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll minus keep, 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 the, keep the change. Mm. He, um, whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he nods and he gets you out another bottle of fine elvish wine. God. Oh, so you see your hamper has two bottles of wine um in enough for food for both today and tomorrow so essentially um six trail rations are in it equivalent of food and just some basic like plates forks knives things like that do anything for us not to eat his breakfast wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's done ever so well out of all the years they're very good quality they're not just like trail rations like seeds and stuff there's meat in here there's smoked sausage there's um there's there's vegetables there's there's loads of different things like seasonal vegetables there's like forage mushrooms and things that have been pan fried and it's good quality shit nice there's even a jar of jam oh <laughs> nice nice spoiled to us sort of since mm. we paid for it you never know, um, these, these uh, brownies might like a hamper. <laughs> That's true. That is true. He he kind of wave, like waves you off after he's got everything together. He says, uh, unless there's anything else, gentlemen, I have some uh, trading to do. You're always welcome back, but uh, I, I believe I have some business to attend. Pretty sure we are your business, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks he, again, he, as always. He, he chuckles and he says, um, for my favourite customers, anything. Just remember that. Anything, okay. <clears throat> um, well, what time do you go to bed? Oh, no. What, you asked Barabbas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so I know about how long we can, you know, come back to him and trade with him, just wondering what time he goes to sleep. So you know. He says, any time. I'm always up for, for you guys. I'm always open for business. Come in the dead of night, anytime. I'll I'll wake up and I'll 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 trade with you. Think think of me as a, a 24 hour service for you guys. <laughs> Petrol station down the road. Everything you need. <laughs> More like a service station, isn't it? For the prices. <laughs> true. True. <clears throat> um. So. Shall we head off then to this gorge? Is it gorge? Yeah. 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 So the gorge isn't far. Um, Joe already told you where it was, and it's really straightforward. He's like, just follow the path. It's already there. The, the gorge is just up ahead, um, and it's down the hill. And you notice that the snow starts to recede very quickly. You know, your ears start to pop because there's that drop in in, in sort of climate in the um altitude sorry and it's not long until you find yourself at the gorge right let's reveal some of it <clears throat> there we go so there's the gorge so here 
you see the river down below you, but it's very far down below you. you. So you guys are on a cliff edge, right. if that makes sense. Um, oh, that so yeah, that river is probably 100, 100 yards below you. So it's quite a significant drop. And then it's just, you know, river... And then across that, the the river seems very gentle actually for the gorge. It's it, you don't notice it to be running particularly fast, but this is quite a severe drop. So you guys will need to climb down here before crossing over to this island to where the the brownies are, and you can obviously see the rock. Yeah. Okay, so shall I uh, put on this climbing gear and make my way down? Yes. So it takes you about two minutes to put the gear on and get everything together. Um, Barabbas was pretty clear about how you use the climbing. You know, he's basically said, have you done this before, etc. And and, and sort of guided you through it. So you know how to use everything. And um, yeah, do you want to give me a climbing check to see how we do and how far you make it before hammering pittons? Yeah. So what do I need to do for that? D20 plus the five. Yeah. Oh, 10. Ooh. Okay. You get an extra plus two because of the climbing frame. Um, but you find as you work your way down, you meet an area of dead end pretty fast. You've made some bad decisions, taken some wrong turns, nailed in a couple of pittons, but you find, find yourself backed into a corner. It's easy enough because the pittons are there to make your way back up. Um, but you've lost some pittons. You can't take them out of the wall um, once you've pinned them in place. So you've lost about probably, you've made it about a quarter of the way down, but you've lost about 10% of your pittons. Right. So if you get this wrong too many times, you're going <laughs> to struggle. <laughs> right. I would Just suggest uh... you go back up and uh, do another time check. <laughs> well, it's, mm. you do it do you, every time you descend in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's better. Well, I say that's better. I just say it was a plus two as well, so that'd be thirteen. It's just one yeah. better. <laughs> thirteen, one better. Um, similar problem. You take a different route. You've got eighty percent in your pittance again. <laughs> okay, then again. Come on, please. <laughs> oh no. No, you're right. That's twenty five this time. God, <laughs> twenty five this time. Nice one. Um, you you blitz it down. All the pittons go in the right places. Um, by the time that you you're all the way down, you don't have too many pittons left. You have about twenty percent of your pittons left. Um, but you, you know everything's there. Your ropes are there, all set up, and um, yeah, you're you're ready for the others to um, abseil down. Sweet. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, uh, can I have a look around while I'm at the bottom, see if there's a safe place to cross this river? Yeah, of course you can. Can you guys give me climbing checks just in case you critically fail? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fake down the oh no. I just gingerly uh, shuffle away from um, where <laughs> they're coming down. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you rolled a four. That's fine. You, you didn't roll a one, Lee, so that's okay. Um, you sort of trip, stumble, and bang yourself against the rock loads of times, but you arrive down in, in one piece. Um, it's just very ungraceful, and you humiliate yourself in front of your colleagues slash comrades. Dave, what did you roll? I rolled seven. Yeah, similar to you as well. You and <laughs> you and Leah kind of just like rolling like someone's thrown you down the place and like you re a pit, reach a pitten and like you jerk on the rope and then you like switch to another rope and then you just like tumble her down again and then you jerk and then this is how you make your way down like nearly a hundred yards of, of cliff. And both of you go splash into the water as you, you hit the hit the bottom. Now the water isn't very high. So, uh, but I do want a swim check from oh both, of, them, both oh of you. Oh my god! <laughs> Screwed up here. <really. laughs> I don't know if I. Oh, I do. Oh, guess what it is? Minus one. <laughs> oh, I swim. Hey, it looks like I'm a strong swimmer today, though. Yeah. I rolled. Oh, thirteen. You can all try and read now. Thirteen. I was trying to read thirteen upside down. Though. 
Mm. So it's 14 I got. So you guys splash into the water, sort of face first, but then immediately get to your knees and get up, and you realise the water's only waist height. None of you do the uh, Little John moment from Men in Tights where you're like, I'm drowning in like three foot of water. Um, so everything's <laughs> fine uh, with that. From what you could see, can I get perception checks from all of you now you're down? <clears throat> 18 with my perception. Uh, 23 24 24 um so you guys notice it is just literally a stride to this island it is not far at all you can move your characters if you like i'll delete sven and harold actually i did copy you in quickly so you guys are just able to stride onto the island no issues no worries no qualms um ad you notice that round the tree stumps there's tiny little holes and and a tiny bit of light just shining out of the bottom, like almost a natural light coming from the bottom of each of these little trees. And you feel the island is really actually warm. It, there's a bit of snow on there, but as you reach down and touch it, the, the ground feels warm, strangely enough. Hmm. Can I try and take a peek in one of these glowing holes? Yeah, of course you can. Um, can you roll me a reflex, please? Oh, reflex! <laughs> oh my god, are you going to lose an eye, man? How do I? How do I do that? Uh, D twenty, and oh, okay. on your character sheet, um, you've got fortitude, reflex, and will underneath your attributes, your you know strength, dex, and stuff like that. Oh, so that's plus um, five, then. Yeah, plus five for your reflex. So D twenty plus five. I swear, oh, every time is minus one. 25. You yes. see a tiny finger come out and just try to poke you in the eye. Um, <laughs> and it sort of retracts like a tiny hand and finger. And you just kind of go like that. like Not like a malicious try to put out your eye. It's more of like a prankstery sort of poke. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like these brownies already. Brownies. Is it brownie? Yeah, brownies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just like... Uh, guys, there's something living in the ground. <laughs> like these holes, there's something in there. You hear tiny, tiny chuckling, like. Terrified. <laughs> 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 um... <laughs> Can I get a perception from both Dave and Lee, please? Oh, God. Another one. Another perception. That is a. Three plus my perception is about eight in total. Twenty-three. Oh god. Your CMD is ninely. Yours is okay, cool. Um so Dave, you um you notice something like rustling in the bushes and you feel like a little tug on your trousers, but you kind of like just move your feet out of the way. Uh, Lee, you are pantsed. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your trousers just come down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you've got robes, haven't you? Do you, do you have, do you wear trousers, Lee? Does your character wear? Well, I, I had, I had this robe? massive, like specially made, um, Ah, uh, coat cloak. Yeah, yeah. So do you? You did have a robe on underneath, didn't you? Do you wear I trousers? Have, uh, no, I don't. No. Okay, your socks come down then. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just it's just whistling in the wind. You yeah, know? it's well, how, well, just the breeze going. That that's fine, but but you feel your socks come down as you are the. Robe wearer's equivalent of pants. Can I um, yeah. lean down to the hole again and see if I can grab one of the fingers as they try and poke me again? Okay, cool. Um, can I get a initial reflex from you, and then can I get a CMD? I'm um, sorry. Uh, can I just get the reflex first, please? Yeah, yeah. That's ten. That's ten. Yeah, you feel a little poke in your eye, um, <laughs> like, and it's just like, oh, oh, tiny <laughs> finger in my eye. 
um, at the same time, you reach out and attempt to grab one of these things. So okay. you have something called a CM. B, which is a uh, attack bonus. You see, MD is your defense. So, okay. um, if you're going to try and grab them or grapple them, so plus two, or drag yeah. them out, you're going to have to roll me a d20 plus two, and you have to beat one of these things. Um, CMD. Oh, 20. I have a quick look. What a brownies. Um, CMD is 20. Did you say? Yeah. Yeah, so you manage to grab this tiny, tiny hand and you hear a, get off me! <laughs> and they are speaking in Elvish, if you have it. Uh, Elvish? is half elf, is it not? Is that not... Yeah, oh, what languages yeah. do you speak? Uh, why can I... Oh, oh yeah, I'll I speak Elven. Yeah. Yeah. You speak common, elven, giant, under common. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they speak elvish. And they say, get off me. Are they wearing trousers? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're wearing... They wear tiny little, like, outfits. So they're, they're wearing, like, tiny brown trousers um, and a tiny brown waistcoat. And they've got, like, little suspenders as well. Oh, and, God. like, it's a, like a, a super little cute outfit. Can I try and pants the one? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I mean you're super strong. Like the brace is just boing away, and like you you pants them, and it's there looking really like sad and a pouty lip at you. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll pull them back up and let it go. <laughs> yeah, um, it scampers straight back into its hole. <laughs> okay, um, so. Can we see where this the sword, the sword, the axe? Yeah. So you see, I'll use your previous perception roll. So you see this giant stone, and you see the axe embedded in it. Okay. So um, can I say out to them that, hi friends, uh, we need that axe back. Uh, you hear a tiny voice say, "Go away." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please, it, it belongs to one of our friends that really need it. It's it's the giant stone gods. Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. And then you hear like when he says piss off, like the other, like you hear from the other holes, like. <laughs> 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 so these are so smaller; they're really that like, dangerous. <laughs> They're probably like a hand's height, if you if you think about yeah. it. Maybe some of them are a little bit taller, but they're mostly like they're really tiny. Um, I mean, knowledge, nature, please, to see what you know about them. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, 14. fourteen. Have a look what you know about them. So you know that they're often less than any high. Um, they're known as having maniacally friendly looks on their face, and they live in small, earthy burrows around trees. You, th the biggest ones stand two feet, um, but you you don't know them as being particularly aggressive. They okay. they they like to prank people. Say. So uh, I'm either going to take this axe back or you can trade for me. One of them uh, goes, what you got? Oh, do you like hampers? <laughs> <laughs> Food, meat, wine. They sort of giggle and uh, you hear one of them go... Uh, you can leave that, but uh, the Earth God might not like it. Would he be okay if you told us we could have it? He says, leave the hamper. And uh, 
We'll tell you. We'll tell you what you want to know. Oh, I tell you what. So I, I'll uh, set this hamper up then and sit down cross-legged and have lunch with them. <laughs> oh, let's have a quick look. Oh, no. So one of them sort of creepy crawls out and sort of looks at you and is like got a really like <laughs> on its face and he sort of like. <laughs> tiptoes to the hamper and um, he looks at the pot of the jam and he looks at you and he's like puts his finger on it um, puts his finger on it and the pot of jam and him disappear oh <laughs> I was going to lean over and open it for him <laughs> sneaky little thing mm. another one sort of like comes slowly out and he's doing the same thing like sneaking <laughs> And like he's he's going for the bottle of wine, and his like eyes are getting wider and wider. And then he like puts his hands on it, and both him and the bottle of wine disappear. Can I just go? Wait, you, you can join me. I'm not going to hurt you. And I'll just like point out seating. <laughs> some sort of so three come out, and they're all nodding, but they're still doing the same creepy thing. And they're they're like nodding and nodding and nodding. And then all of a sudden, like the rest of the food is just gone. Oh. <laughs> And uh, you hear like and like eating and, and noshing and like, rah, 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 rah. and then out of one of the burrows, like, is thrown the empty pot of jam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one of them says, uh, "Stone God likes metal, metal Ooh. or magic or things that come from the earth that have been stolen by humans, naughty humans." Oh, so they want stuff. They want stuff back. Ah, would uh, uh, so. a gold bar suffice? Um, you hear like giggling, and uh, one says, uh, "Offer to Stone God, and he may release the axe." Okay. Um... How do we offer to the Stone God? Who who releases the axe? The... They say Stone God. Not you brownies don't control the axe. They laugh and they say Stone God control everything. Stone God is God. Does Stone God control you? Stone God controls everything. You mean <laughs> tree, bush, ground, warm, Stone God. See, I don't want to... There's nature. We know that Sved is uh, quite... Well, it prays to nature, doesn't he? Good old Sved. Sure hey, lots, lots of people are very God-fearing. Um, but, I mean, this seems a bit more heathen-y. Like, they're not talking about the gods that you know. They're, they're talking about Stone God, this lump of rock in the island. <laughs> it's, I mean, roll me a knowledge religion check, Lee. I think this will be the best way of sort of determining it. Knowledge really, John. Oh, that's uh, this way it gets. So I get the feeling bit... this is just a thing, and they're just assuming it's a god. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Maybe. really. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know, Dave. And you got a good bluff. This is where it gets a bit confusing for you because my knowledge religion, mm. I've got like a misc modifier on it as well. Yeah, so the bit that you're looking at is just your skill modifier because everything yeah. adds to it. So your knowledge religion is. Yeah. Two, and that's because of your minus two in intelligence. So it's three ah. plus one, four minus two, so it's two in total. It's because of your lo character's low intelligence, Lee. Joel, Joel, ah. can you can you project project anything? Like, can you make an illusion? Mm. Um, I can yeah. make them think there's something there if they. That's so. So could you fake a stone god that says, "Release the axe" or something? <laughs> uh, based based on your knowledge of religion, Lee, mm. you think there's definitely a connection with a god, and you think it's um, a connection with the god of nature. Okay, right. So can I just can I just walk up to this axe and pull it out of the stone? Give it, it can give it a go if you like. Yeah, I've got good strength. I'm just curious. Yeah, give me a strength check, please. Thank you, Lucy. I'm going to use my gold dice for this one. Actually, can I get a CMB instead, please, Dave? 
What's the CM? What's the CMB? Uh, D20 plus your CMB. Yours is plus zero because you're trying to grapple this thing out of the rock. I thought my grapple's plus two. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at Giles. <laughs> yeah, it is plus two. Yeah, D20 plus two for me. So it would be slightly better than a strength check for you. Okay, D20. 11 plus two, 13. 13. Um, so you begin to yank on this um, axe and it begins to sort of pull up to you, but immediately like the rock starts to bubble and the axe begins to sort of go back inside and now it's a little bit deeper in than it was before and it just won't budge. Oh, God. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we can't just trick him and take it then. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kind of proving the fact that there is something going on here and it's the yeah. little brownies are no. just like... What about in, no, in a sing-song way, immediately they reply, Stone God, Stone God! <laughs> <laughs> we know. If you, I don't know if you guys remember, but the, mm. we definitely had Sved like, touching the ground and sort of like getting to grips with Mother Nature. So it might be that we have to get Sved down here to see if he can put it out. Potentially. I mean, he does own the eggs. Mm. Um, but I ain't climbing out. I don't think I mean, <laughs> Well, I'm just thinking Sved being Sved is going to be like, oh, no, you can handle it for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks, Sved. I, uh, okay, my character paces up and down for a bit. Mm. Paces up around around the rock, over here, down here, back again, back again. And the whole time he's doing I'm I'm chuntering to myself. He goes, you, it wants magic, and it wants things that belong to the earth. And uh, he wants, so I'm guessing he wants an offering. Uh, the, the, you hear the brownies go, um, like, just sort of giggle at everything you say. But then uh, they <laughs> say, or from Earth, magic from Earth. Or from I... Earth, is it? Or, or as in O R E, yeah, yeah. as in like metal, yeah. So in that case, then, as, I, as I'm listening to them giggle at me and things like that, and I go, Oh, okay, okay. All from Earth and magical. <laughs> and then I just then I, then I, I unchain. I'm gonna re. I'm mm. gonna act this out. <laughs> <laughs> I unchain my chain of brevis. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have that on me, and I place it on the altar whilst holding the axe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Handle, and I as a as a lower one, I pick the other up if I can. Yeah, so stronger than you, the moment the amulet hits the stone, um, it immediately rock bubbles and it gets dragged in. Um, you initially pull on the axe and it's really stiff, but slowly it sort of eases off as the rock bubbles and you draw the axe from the stone. Oh, yeah. well done, Dave. <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> and then I'll turn around to the little brownies again. I'm your stone god now. <laughs> <laughs> um, like litter starts to come from the burrows and begins to sort of bombard you not in a harsh way but they're like uh, it, in a sort of you're a bit of a, a heretic kind of way <laughs> <laughs> you've just it's, it's like someone walking into a church and saying they're Jesus it's, it's you getting the sort of boo <laughs> I, that's okay Okay, I'll just I'll just use the axe just kind of push him away as I'm mm. walking back. <laughs> Can I get some perceptions from you as you do this? Oh, All man. of us. Yes, please. That is a ten. Plus my perception. Eighteen for me. What is with my dice? <laughs> my online dice tonight suck. Six. <laughs> I cool. got fifteen. Who rolled the highest? What did you get, Ad? Was it 18? Uh, 18, yeah. Yeah, cool. So you see someone peeking outside of um, what was a hiding place to kind of get a better view. And you see that he's a guy with a, a peaked hat wearing black leather, um, but this guy's got a big-ass trident in his hands, and he's sort of, like, looking down at you guys, sort of peering closer, like he's seen, he's seen something. Um he sort of catches eyes with one of you and kind of just like stands there, like kind of unsure of what to do, but 
he's he's clearly been spying on you. So I'll uh, nudge Ulf and uh, Giles go mm. up there. Look. Mm. And that point, Gali sheath the axe and draw mm. my uh, aim. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, uh, he's he. I mean, he was expecting it. You're not going to catch him unawares. Can I get a d20 initiative from you to see if you go before him? Because he starts mm-hmm. seeing you draw the bow, and uh, oh. he's going to peg it if he can go before you. Okay. Come on. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah, okay. no worries. I roll, I roll 17. Yeah, cool. You go first. Um, what arrow are you going to fire at him? <laughs> oh, like, where's that gone? <laughs> You'll be back in a sec. Um, a bleeding arrow. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Give it a go then. Yeah. Um, so it's your d20 to attack. Okay. Is it d20 plus some? Yeah, it's d20 plus your usual attack bonus for firing with a bow. Uh, short bow. Plus four for you. Actually, how far is away? I bet he's not 120 feet away, is he? No, I'm not. No, he's 30 foot away, so you're fine. Sweet. Okay, so that's plus four, whatever I roll on here. That uh, is 16. Yeah. Please tell me that's a hit. So 16. Let's have a quick check. 16. I roll 16 plus four. 20. Come on. Hit him in the shoulder. Make him bleed. Um. So it bypasses his AC. <gasps> Um, and it hits him, so give me a what d6 for damage. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> and, and then if, if this does do well, I give you full permission, Giles, at some point. Offering <laughs> That is five. I Five back. damage. I okay, so okay. plus one for the bleeding damage. Um, so that's six damage to this guy. Um, you notice that it kind of just kind of nicks him in the shoulder. Oh, no. You've done quite a lot of damage to him comparatively to like a little creature, but this guy seems very sturdy. Like his armor seems to take a lot of it. Like his shoulder ro- rolls with the blow. Like his experience just... You can tell it's not done comparatively a lot of damage um, to how powerful this guy is. Um, but he he kind of rolls with the punch, but like you notice the blood start gushing out. Um, on his turn, he sort of looks at it and like starts pinching it off. Okay. And you notice the blood starts to sort of degush, and he just breaks off the um, the shaft of the arrow. And um, that's the end of his go. So do you guys want to roll initiative for me if you guys are going to keep fighting this guy? Um, I think we want to know who's been spying on us. So that's all right with you guys. 11 for me. Mm. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> Let's check my initiative because I can't remember what it is. I've got 12. Uh, oh, it plus my initiative. 12 plus my initiative. Mm. Um, I'm already using your initiative from before, Dave. Last one. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna get to the loop. I'm lost. Thirteen. Did the same. Mate. Okay, so that so put you above Ad. Did you get twelve, Ad? Twelve, yeah. Yeah, so it puts you above Adley. Cool. So it's Dave's turn again, but he's in the loop. <laughs> On the eleven, eleven, I got sorry. Yes, yeah, so he's still below. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him, but the spearman rolled really badly for his initiative. That's fine. He, 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 he won't be long. Intermission. La la la. <laughs> Your intermission music. Exactly. 
Need a little advert now. Do, 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 do. Yeah. What's that? What's what? I thought I heard something. I couldn't say if it was a cat or a baby. <laughs> uh, it might have been a baby. Yeah. Mm. It's a little brownie sniggering in your ear. Freaking you and yeah. you. Going, he. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna miss, you're gonna miss. Wow, he's taking his time tonight, isn't he? Must have been hold it for a good while. <laughs> <laughs> Always back. Time is time is flying low. Wait for it. You may want to zip back up, Dave. <laughs> 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 It's uh, your turn anyway, Dave. Okay. What's happened so far? Um, nothing. We rolled initiative. And oh, just wait, you're wait first teams. on the initiative order. So this guy is still stood up there. Yeah, yeah. He's he, he's pinched the um, the thing off like it's not bothered him. Okay. Um... I will fire another arrow at him. Yeah. Another bleeding. Nope. Nope. I hope this works. I'm going to fire a tangle shot arrow. Oh, excellent. I'll just bring up the rules for that. Is this the one that looks like a... Like a bag on the end of a... Um... <laughs> on a shaft. On, on, on the end of a shaft, yes. A baby's fist holding an apple. So range took a touch attack. Okay, excellent. So can I get D twenty plus your um basically what what you do to hit someone with a short bow? D twenty plus four for you, isn't it? Yep. This needs to hit. <laughs> really needs to hit. 17? No. 15. Fucking okay, hell, I'm reading that completely. 15 I got. 15 plus 4, 19. Okay, that's a hit that, that touches his uh, armor, uh, touch armor AC. Um, he's just going to have to roll a... Ch -ch -ch DC ten reflex save or DC twelve strength to break. Oh, I'd do that at his on his go. Or ten points of slashing damage to cut through. Okay, so that hits him, and you notice it goes all the way down his leg, and you notice it kind of sticks his foot to the floor, and like expands like expanding foam. Oh, so that's no. what the tangle shot does. Um, so at the moment he is um, essentially sort of glued to the ground, kind of thing. How far away is he? Can't move. How far away is he? He's what? Th is he thirty foot from you? Thirty foot, Lee. so I could move to him, um, and we could do a guy actually. How long does this stay glued for? Is it one turn? He will stay glued until he breaks free. Do the. the Target arrow deals no damage when it hits, but the target is splashed with an al al alchemical adhesive. The reduced amount of glue means this arrow is less effective than the natural tangle foot bag. Um, the weight of a tangle shot arrow reduces its grain in range increment to half normal. So yeah, it, it just it just seems to glue him until he breaks free. So. Yeah. I imagine there is a range limit on it, but this guy... The thing is, this guy gets a chance to deal damage on it and break free every turn, so sure. you'll find out if he's uh, stuck to the place or not. But for want... now, he's flat-footed. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, 
have a couple of options here guys I can go up to him and touch him do a bit of bleed touch or I can summon something like a viper to bite him and potentially poison him what would you, what would you have me do? Him out and then get some info out of him or something I've well, can't you, him out. <laughs> can't you summon something that will like grab him and drag him down here hmm. or something like yeah, it's... His summons aren't that great yet. Yeah, it's mm. not. What's in between his and him? Is that can we get to him easily? I'm not too sure on what I'm looking at. Is it like a big drop or a small drop? Or so that cheese? is again another push section of the river that divides around this island. The right. river is really shallow here, really, really shallow. Can I summon? Oh, so is he... Sorry, go on, Dad. Is he at the same height as us? Is he? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that much above you. It's basically an embankment that goes up slightly. He was hiding in some trees and some bushes yeah, next to him. Um, he's taken a step out to have a look at you because he couldn't really see as well. But if you look at the tree line, he couldn't really see you guys that well. Oh, so it can easily get to him in one turn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to walk up to him. And if that's okay, I'm going to get to If I can move to him. Yeah. Because he ain't going to. Do much to me. Right, I'll just stand there. If I stand, just if I just if I move myself to, oh, let me just get my right to one. If I was to move to here, mm. it's stuck, so he can't hit me with anything, can he? As such. No, but if he becomes unstuck, he can then attack you, or he can because he's stuck. He can lash out at you with his spear because I'll... his foot's just glued to the ground. How far does the spear go though? I mean, like, I'm just. Could I, in other words, it's... could I go to there and touch him with a bleed touch attack in one go? Yeah, you could. Yeah. Oh, I'll do that. That'd I'll, be fine. I'll do yeah. that then straight away. Yeah. That's one d six, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I know my bleed touch guys. <laughs> you have to roll to hit first, Lee. Oh damn. Okay. Um, so you have to do a touch attack. So your touch attack is based on... So it's your melee attack bonus, which is zero, so it's straight d20, Lee. Nine. Let's have a look on this guy's flat-footed AC. You miss him, I'm afraid. Oh, damn. So you reach out to grab him, and you miss him. At your turn. Um, so yeah, if I can move up up towards him as well, yeah, yeah, of um, course you can. Then if I draw my bow, point an arrow at his head, and kind of ask him who he is, why he's here, before I let go of this arrow. Yeah, of course you can. Remember, if you fire an arrow at a close range, you get some attack of opportunity. Right. So a bow and arrow may is is not the choice weapon in in melee combat. Right. Um. I'll just get my club out then. <laughs> yeah, club's fine. Club, club will and, work. D6 bludgeoning damage. Um, yeah. He turns and looks at you and he says, uh, the name's Fisk. Fisk. And he um, tries to jab you with his spear ad. Okay. Um, so that's 19 plus. Actually, what the rules of spear pathfinder? Were you waiting to hit him? Yes, yeah, so I was basically threatening him. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Just trying to figure out who he is. And... Uh, actually, do you want to roll an intimidate for me, Ad? Yeah. I know he answered your question, but you might answer in more detail if you succeed yeah. in intimidate check on him. 14 plus... Intimidation. Oh. Oh, well, minus two. Oh, no, maybe yeah. not. <laughs> well, yeah, he doesn't find you very imitating at all. Uh, he says his name with a smirk on his face and jabs you with his spear. Um, his spear is 5-3, can be thrown, 1-D-8 medium. So, D20 plus 7. Okay, so that's a hit. He does 1d8 plus 6. Shit. That's my d8. Oh, that's a d12. There we go, that's my d8. Sorry. Um, 
Right, that's not a D. It's my D. I can't find my D8. Must... There we go. <laughs> found my D8. Six plus six. Um, so you take 12 damage, Ed. Well, I'm down. Oh. Minus two. I thought we had this guy. <laughs> I thought he was a, a sitting target when uh, Angelus glued him to the ground. He stuck a bleeding arrow in him. <laughs> he, he... Sorry, what are you down to minus, Ad? Two. Minus two. Um, he spits on you as well as you go down. <laughs> He's a nasty guy as Fisk. Um, and, and he laughs. Um, uh, whose go is it next? It is Dave. It's your turn. Okay. Well, I better get over here. Um, Dave, Dave's used to it at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, got an axe on you, Angelus. Always, mate. And try and put one in the head of this guy, this Frisk. Well, can I ask him a question as I draw, as I pull my axe, one of my axes out? Yeah, of course you can. Um, the question is, why are you following us? He laughs and he says, if you're too stupid not to realize that, then uh, you know, there's no point talking to you. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Now this guy, you say it's... this guy's got West in Latte. Yeah. Well, he's definitely been sent by Captain Wayne Pike. Uh, the uniform's the same, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I say, uh, so, uh, so I say, so assuming you're uh, part of the crew of Captain Wayne Pike. That's what I'll say to him. <laughs> as, I, as I tap my axe. <laughs> he, he says, um, that lovely pink brain's working now. Let's see if we can spill it all over the floor. Oh, he's just full of charisma, isn't he, this guy? <laughs> Go on, Dave. Try and slice his head. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm trying to see if I've got anything. Do I still have these bear traps? No, I don't. I got rid of them, didn't I? Damn. Just twat him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll, go for, I'll go for a swing at him with it. What are you going to attack him with? An axe. What axe? You've got about five on you. <laughs> including spuds. Oh, please. Oh, come on, Dave. What do you think I should use? Shall I use spuds? spuds. Definitely. Spuds not around. And it's only going to some abuse anyway. Let's give it back some blood on it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to use spuds axe. Okay. D20, please, plus your usual melee attack, which D20. for you, it's plus two to hit. Plus two to hit. That's good. I rolled 17. Oh, awesome. 19. Damn, 19. I rolled 19. You rolled 19. I'm just going to quickly look up the stats for this axe. Oh, please, Tommy. Yeah. It's good. Ch -ch -ch -ch. It's be old and rusty and battered, isn't it? Split him in two. No, <laughs> it, it, it's got to be good. I've got a good feeling about this axe. It should be magical or something. It's just got to obliterate him to dust. <laughs> Hey, well, it's one one part of that crew we don't have to deal with. I'm shortlifting the example weapons. Sorry, I'm just quickly looking up the stats of this axe. It's okay, I'm very quickly going to eat something else. 
<laughs> but what are you eating? We all uh, need to um, know. I'm eating Twix. He's salty caramel. Very nice. To be fair, it just tastes like Twix with salt. Okay, so we can't ask Twix to sponsor us then. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you roll two dice for me, please, Dave? Can I get a D6 and a D10? A, a D6 and D10. Yep, and plus your normal da damage modifier, and then add an extra plus two to it, please. That's a lot. Of, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll just tell you what I roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roll me a d10 and a, and your a d6, please. So d6 for the throwing axe damage, d10 for something else. Oh no. Okay, d d6 first. It's four yep. plus yep. plus two, is it? It's, we'll no. work out the modifiers after, and then can you roll me another d, a d10, please? D10 five. So that's nine, and. Your regular melee damage is so when you attack with a dagger, is it plus something on your damage? It's D four plus one, isn't it? So an extra plus one there. So that's ten, and then plus two, so twelve. So you do twelve damage to him. So you swing out with your axe, and it bites through his armor, and you notice that the axe it feels really cold in your hand, but not freezing. But to him, you see the coldness bite into him as a, and it leaves an icicle behind as you rip the axe out of him. Oh, boy. Nice. I'm happy with this. Does, 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 does he say anything or is he just like, a, uh. <laughs> it, it's quite a major attack. I mean, this guy's still pretty hardcore. Um, but he sort of looks at you with a, a sort of, a, a new sort of fear, like you think you thought he was going to do a lot better off in this, but now he's he's taken a considerable amount of damage that he didn't think he'd take. He kind of gives you an appraising look that says nothing. Mm. Uh, Lee, it's your go. Lovely. Yeah, I'm going to give Bleeding Touch. Is it a straight D20? Yes. Uh, that, okay, so, oh, for God say it. God damn. I miss. What did you get? Four. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely a miss. Um, Ad, check to see if you're bleeding on the floor for me. D20 plus you, um, your fortitude save, please. Oh my god, five. Please, yeah, you, could you take one bleeding damage for me, Ad? And go into minus three. Yeah. God. Thank you. Oh my. Right, it's this guy's go. Oh no. Uh -huh. <laughs> and for his go, he is going to that's a hit D eight. So he doesn't even try and dodge out or do a strength check. He literally takes the tip of his spear and just smashes the um the hard glue surrounding his leg. And that's what he does with his turn. So he's fully mobile again and his full AC is back. <laughs> um, Dave, your turn. Oh, <laughs> it's got to be another axe. I've got to swing at him with that axe again, aren't I, really? Yep. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're supposed to take your turn, then have the Twix. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> Do you want to roll to hit for me, Dave, please? Yeah. 15. <clears throat> 15. Is a hit. 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 With this weapon, it would be a hit. Oh, thank uh, God. Can you roll me 1d6 plus 1d10 and then add 1d3? Uh, one th and add 3 on top of that. Okay, so rolling. 1d6 for the axe damage, 1d10 yeah. for the ice damage, and then so plus three from it. So many man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, what's the 1d6 result? <laughs> I got three. Three. 
So we've got yeah. three. Roll one d ten for me, please. Again, that is five. So three plus five is eight. Plus three <laughs> is eleven. <laughs> you do eleven damage. Maths with Paris. <laughs> yeah so you really cut into this guy this time like rip right near his neck yes. you can see a little bit of collarbone um he's still you know fine on his other side and he's still wielding his spear and trying to dodge and duck and dive and weave but that axe just seems to be biting through um whose go is it lee it's your turn what are you gonna do Please, please, Nex, if you're there, give me a good roll. <laughs> 13. Oh, I'm afraid hey. that's a miss. Oh, He's my. very dexterous. Oh, 13 for bleeding touch is a miss. Um, Ad, can you try and roll to prevent your death here? Um, God. D20 God. plus um, fortitude save for me. I'll pick you up again in a minute, Ad. Oh my god. Uh it died. That's that's eight. Yep, sorry. Down to minus four. Ooh. It's gonna get harder and harder to overcome this guy, so you're gonna wanna pick him up lest he die. He's only got until minus oh. what's your constitution, Ed? Uh, ten. Ten. He gets to minus ten, he's dead. Oh, oh, shit. Just yeah. to let you know. Do we have any... I'm going to check my spells. Uh, not my spells, I'm going to see if we've got any potions. It's the Spearman's go. Oh, God. And the Spearman's going to attack his biggest threat, which is Dave. Oh, double. And... So that's a 19 he rolled. Oh, my, oh my God. God. That's not a critical hit. So it's 1d8 plus 6. He rolled six. That's 12 damage, please, you take. So he just stabs his fork through your chest. Take 12 damage, oh, please. Jesus. <laughs> 12 damage. This guy's a monster. That spear's a freaking monster, isn't it? Take this arm. I'll be that spear if we kill him. <laughs> it's not necessarily the spear. Oh, so oh. he's a badass, isn't he? Mm, he's a badass. He's a guy roaming in the wilderness by himself. He's uh, <laughs> he's a badass. Yeah. Just, just, just like, in game, but out of game. Just collectively, can we all understand that if we do kill this guy, I am, and I am taking you back to the encampment. We didn't that, hear that, Dave. You kind of lagged out a little. <laughs> no. Can you hear? Can you hear me? We can. We're just getting slight lag from you for some reason. Ah, oh, buggery, Al. Can you? Is that any better? You're here. Yeah, here. Yeah, can hear you. It just literally cut out when you said what you were doing. <laughs> you just need to close your pawn oh. in your tab window. That's all you need to do. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's where I went wrong. And if you take your hands out your trousers, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> 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 Unless you're rolling die, and that's fine. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, what were you going to say? You, you wanted to what? If we kill this guy, if we kill this guy, if we kill this guy, I'm going to cut his head off. <laughs> I'm going to put his head on this trident, and I'm going to parade him back to the encampment. Fair enough. Just putting that out there. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Okay. I think this is the third yeah. time we're going to watch you try and hack through someone's neck. And <laughs> yeah, no, it's got a thing about it. it, it, it but he always fails. Yeah. This is the this is the worst <laughs> thing. He always fails his strength check. He's more of a butcher than a you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Um. So, Dave, it's it's your turn now. He's taken a massive hack out of you. How much health do you have left, by the way? <laughs> Five. <clears throat> oh, nice. So another hit will do you. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> um. Well, I know I've got three potions on me, and I know what one of them does. 
Hmm. Just pondering about whether or not I dare to drink one of the ones I don't know what it is. What colour? Red, I was thinking. Do you do it? Just do it, Dave. <laughs> go on. <laughs> I'll risk. show you. Yeah, go on. I'll drink the red potion. Okay. Um, so you drink the potion and immediately can everyone roll a DC 10 fortitude save? Oh, wow. oh my God. A what, DC... That... I don't know what that means. Um, um, can no, you roll a d20 I? and add your fortitude save on it? You need to beat 10. DC. I need to roll. When, I, when I say DC 10, it means you have to beat 10. If right. I say DC okay. 20, you need to beat 20. So roll a d20 and add your fortitude save to it. So 21. Okay. One God. sec. I don't know what my fortitude is, so you're going to have to wait. Four. Okay. Where, where's fortitude? It's below strength, dex, charisma, uh, constitution, Thank God intelligence, for that. etc. 23. Oh, my fortitude is plus two, is it? Okay. Yeah, so d20 plus two, you've got to beat 10. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, shit. Your foe's already passed. Oh, fuck. Um, 20, go 20. <laughs> nice. So you notice next to you, Dave um, appears something absolutely hideous. Um, what potion do I drink? It's got tiny horns. It's got little fangs. It's red. It's tiny size. It's got a little scorpion tail and bat-like wings, and its skin is completely red. Um, but its face is horrifically disfigured. The fact that you're all looking at it, it makes you all feel sick. Your fortitude stave was stopping you from having the sickened status. And um, it turns to you and it says, uh, Master, how can I assist you? <laughs> sick him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want you to how you get attack the trident guy. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm going to add it to the initiative order, which it will go at the end of the round. Oh, what a wicked potion! I <laughs> could have gone terribly wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> when I do a fortitude, all I was like, "Oh, I've fucked up here. I'm just going to explode." <laughs> uh, the spell is uh, Lorvan's ugly imp. No, nice. so it allows it allows you to summon an imp for ten rounds or one minute, and it summons a hideous but relatively servile imp. Anyone that gazes upon the imp must make a DC ten fortitude save or be sickened. It's a custom potion of my own making. Nice. <laughs> You're sick and twisted, nice. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the imp goes at the end. Uh, Lee, it's your turn. Lovely. I'm just going to uh, move myself slightly behind um, Ulf here, and I'm also going to um, make him drink one of my... Can he drink a potion when he's down like that? Or do I need to use a spell? Um... He can drink a potion. He can force it down his neck. But I'm going um, to force a, a, a potion down his neck. Now, the only thing is you're moving out of a threatened squarely, which can trigger an attack of opportunity. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, that's the only oh, risk of doing that. Um, that's the problem in moving next to him there. Okay. I'm going to uh, do the thing. You know, like in chess, where you don't let go of your uh, little figure here and you decide mm. not to make that move. I'm yeah, going to <laughs> still shove down that potion from here, though. I'm just going to chuck it at his mouth instead. I mean, technically, you're a square away. I, I, I mean, he is near, but I'm going to say you are adjacent. Um I, I'm going to allow it. I'm going to say because you're all sort of in the threatened squares around him. I'm going to say you can kind of just like uh, throw a potion Launch at him. Um, though, does the use of a potion trigger an attack of opportunity? Let's have a look. I have no idea. I don't. So let's have a look at the rules. Pity Pathfinder. Using a potion or an oil provides provokes an attack of opportunity. Oh dear. So it does according to the Pathfinder rules. Um, There's something new. Well, 
I so mean, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to eat the attack of opportunity to heal him, Lee. Right. Basically. Okay. So it but, makes no difference if I move or not. Then I'm gonna get a. a no, it going doesn't. To get you're gonna get attack. one of attack of opportunity. You yeah. can't do two or two on you. Right. Okay. I am going to move. Make that move then over here. He can take okay. the attack of opportunity and see what happens. That's fine. Um, going to obviously shove, try and shove that potion down Ubik's neck. What, fine, I don't die. What's your, what's your AC, Lee? It's nine, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's a hit. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Big AC, Take nine damage, please. Woo. I'm still alive, guys. That's the main thing. Oh, thank God. You are. Um, are you using a spell, Lee, or are you using a potion? I am using a you. potion. Spells better for you. Is it potion? Is it is spell. spell uh, it only is, because the all your potions are level one. You're a level two cleric, so you do D eight plus two, and that'll be the last time I'll be helping you out with that. <laughs> Remember that, guys. Remember that. D eight plus two, yeah. level two cleric. Got it. All right. So I down. I can just do. A, I don't need to do a D twenty. It's just D eight. It's D eight and then plus two plus because two. you're a level two cleric, and you get seven. Yep. Uh, your backup add and on. But, uh, were you at what? What were you at minus of? Minus you were minus four, four yeah. so you're back at minus three. three. Yeah, on three. Yeah, you're on three. Sorry. Yeah. Maths with that. <laughs> <laughs> what show was on the chalkboard, Ad? <laughs> so you're back up with uh, with three. Uh -huh. Um. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that, Mark. No, no, I don't want that one. <laughs> Um, just in time for your turn, Ad. What do you want to do? Um, You've will... got your club in hand. Yeah, I'm going to have to. It's the only thing I can do, isn't it? If I'm, if I, is this just an attack of opportunity on Lee? Does he get one on me as well? Uh, no. So I will flee in that case. <laughs> You're right next to him, though. Over here. If, if... Attack him. He can't do another attack of opportunity yeah. this round. So uh Ad 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 gets to run away. Um, run away. So yeah. Probably a good, <laughs> good choice there. So you back off. Um the spearman is a bit weirded out at this weird devil imp thing. He's not seen anything like it before. So I, th I think he's less afraid of you guys, more afraid of this thing. So he is going to attack it Ooh. and critically fail. Um, he is going oh. to... What can I do for a critical fail option? I suppose the worst possible outcome is for him to miss, but there's nothing really he can set off or do. Or I'm going to say he just simply misses his attack. He, he doesn't get it. He's, he's embarrassed and uh, he looks visibly shaken. He's, he loses a bit of morale. Actually, yeah, let's do a morale roll for him to see if he's um, going to continue to engage in combat. Passes his morale check. There we go. Um, imp is the imp's turn to get him. Come so on, the imp. devil imp. Come on. Give him um, some pain. Sting on him. Bish, bish, bish. He needs so it takes this well, scorpion like stinger and it heads for this guy's throat and it misses. Oh. It just bounces off his armor. He does, however, disappear. The imp, the imp vanishes. Okay. Uh, Dave, it's your turn. Uh. Uh. Okay. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna be stood there for a moment and pondering as to where the hell that imp just went and what I just birthed from drinking that potion. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to on my axe again. Nice. I've not got a decent yeah. imp token, but I'm gonna use a bat token instead. So sorry, it's it's not appropriate really, but uh, it's the only token I could find at short notice. So imagine that's, that's an imp, cool. and it's just gone, it's just disappeared. So it was there. Uh, you're going to use okay. the axe again. So d20 for me to hit. Okay, d20. Ten. That's a so that's ten yeah. to hit. So for you, it's plus two, isn't it? Yep. To hit, so that's plus oh. twelve. Um, plus the 
magic axe. It's still not enough to hit him. So your axe kind of just like bounces off, but you see the ice like just crawl over his armor where it hits, um, but it doesn't affect him or impact him. Uh, Lee, it's your turn. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I um, I the dice just aren't with me tonight, and um, it's a bit concerning. Um, You've I'm... got a couple of other things to do that you don't normally do, Lee. Again, last time I'm going to help you with this, but um, you have things like your channel negative energy, which you can just deal to people within a certain radius, and you could do it four times a day. You can just go, you, and you, you hit them with your weird aura, and they have a chance of halving the damage, but otherwise it's straight D6. So it's something you could do if you don't want to be I in the range of someone. never knew that. <laughs> What, what, it's what's channel the... negative energy and it's um, second ability down below. It's, so it's the one after bleeding touch. Is there a range on that? Is there, what's the range on that? Let me find it. I know about challenger, but I didn't know what it, that it did that. Um... I believe it's anything within... I'll have a quick look at the core rule book. I think we've looked this up before, um, but it's been a while since we have... It, um channel energy <laughs> or a ch channel energy thirty foot radius centered on the cleric. Okay. It'll affect all creatures of one type, either undead or li living. So Dave would be affected as well. That would be the only issue. Okay. Oh. So, uh, okay, you've already, you can't yeah. move at the moment. That might, yeah, I've probably not suggested the best thing there. I didn't realise that that was everyone within a 30-foot radius. But it's worth considering for next time, Lee. Mm, okay. What I will do is um, I'm going to back off and also summon uh, a Viper. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, cool. I'm going to back off to here. Let me just check my... Because um, the Viper can be spawned up within 15 feet, I believe. Something like that, isn't it? It's yeah. like fifteen, twenty-five feet. It's not far. No, but it, it's it'll do. It'll do within fifteen feet. Yeah, you could summon a viper there. Twenty feet, fifteen feet to Dave, and then yeah, cool. Bye. Yeah, that's fine. So you back off and you wait to summon a um a viper. Let's have a quick look at vipers. Ch -ch. snake let's put that there um yeah so that'll appear at the end of the round and then it'll be able to go on the next turn lee mm -hmm. so snake add your turn um oh i will we'll move over to here and take a shot at him with my bow you are firing into melee combat um, you get a minus four for hitting, and if you fail critically, you can risk hitting someone else. Oh shit! Just letting you know. You're not going for a bag. Don't shoot me, Ad. No, it's the fact that two people are met. You're firing into melee do. combat. That's the issue. Okay. Ad, why don't you just vest up? Yeah, I'm just thinking. Mind you, yeah, there's that imp potentially in there. Yeah, I'll do nothing. <laughs> I shall hide behind this rock and say, Brownies, can you help us? We'll give you a picnic. Uh, you get silence for now. <laughs> Little boys. Um. However... You feel the ground begin to get a little bit warmer beneath you. Oh, nice. Ooh. Underfloor heating, great. Underfloor <laughs> heating. And the snow begins to sort of just melt off slightly. But that's all that happens. Uh, the spearmans go next. He's going to attack you, uh, Dave. 
Um, 14 damage. <laughs> what does that put you on, Dave? Wow. 14. Yeah, 14. 14 damage. 14 damage. What's now minus 9? Minus Ooh. 9, nearly oh, there. Shit me. So I'm down and out. Yeah. Go imp, B. It is the imp, it is the imp's turn now. Um, so you feel, Dave, you're you're unconscious, but you feel like a warm liquid dripping into your mouth. Um, Dave and Ad, you can see that the imp has suddenly appeared again, and it sort of used its nail to slit its wrist, and it's bleeding right into Dave's mouth. And you you. Like your your wounds start slowly knitting back together. Um, nice, handy little bugger. I like this thing. <laughs> Just checking. So, do you want to at the end of every round, Dave? You're going to heal one for a minute. So, for the next ten rounds, you're going to heal by one. One every round. So, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll so your that. your snake appears and you're down to minus eight now, Dave. Oh, I'm minus eight. Cool. Yeah. Because you've been healed, he sort of stopped your uncontrollable bleeding. Cool. By bleeding into your mouth. Pretty gross. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, that's how it is. Uh, Dave, it would be your turn, but we're skipping your turn because you're currently unconscious, but you've healed by one, so that's fine. Um, Lee, your turn. I want to command my viper to go uh, attack um, that guy. Cool. He'll do that at the end of the round. You still have the rest if you go, though, because commanding something is a free action. Oh, yeah, I always forget that. Uh, so he'll do it at the end of the round, and I am I, I'm going to... Um, yeah, I'm going to use uh, another one of my spells, actually. To um, yep. try and heal Dave. Yep, cool. You need to be in touching distance. Uh, what's touching distance? That's like five foot in front of you. Yeah. Right, so, so splashing in the water to get him. Yeah. So five feet. Cool. D eight yep. plus two. All right. You get eight. Nice. I get eight. Oh, I'm back on yep, zero. Then. Back on zero. So that means you are conscious but can't move. So that means I can, can I can command my imp. Well, when you're on plus one, the next well, yeah, you can. Um, when you're on plus one, the next round, you're then able to move. But at the moment, you are currently like on the floor, helpless. Um, whose go is it next? So Lee's just gone. Add it's your turn. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just say to the brownies again that that guy over there, he he, he hates the earth. He's Always poisoning it. <laughs> Can you give me a diplomacy, please? Yeah. Uh, where is it? Oh, my minus two. Oh, six. That'll be. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you hear like little giggles, and uh, the ground gets a little bit warmer. Right. <laughs> Um, Spearman's go, it is going to attack this imp because, again, it's the scariest thing on the map to him. Um, he rolls really low and misses. Yeah, impy. Um, Snake, let's roll for the Viper, Lee. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you did roll for that, don't you? Or do I? Yeah, I do. No, I do. So it's bite, it's plus five. So two plus five, that is a miss. So it tries to bite, and it does not work. It's going to have one attack left before it disappears. Um, at the end of the round, Dave, heal by one. So you're now on plus one. Yay. And you're able to move through your turn. However, before your turn, add the, the warmth beneath your feet starts to get unbearable. 
really hot. <laughs> you start feeling like you're in summer weather from the feet up. And like you feel like a pulsing of the earth through you and you heal by six. Oh, look at that, yes. Take it all back, brownies. <laughs> <laughs> the ground now feels cold. Oh, nice. Back on nine. Um, whose go is it next? It is Dave, it's your turn. Well, I'm gonna have to have a well on my turn, can I command the imp but also take my turn as well? Yeah, yeah. You're just talking to the imp. The imp is very willing to serve you. Um okay. he he's been acting autonomously. Um but you did tell him to attack this guy. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to attack him with my axe again. Hmm. Well, it's fed. Right. Okay. Uh, D20, please. D20, here we go. Come on. Nice. Ooh. 16. Plus something. Six, yep. I rolled 16 plus. That's, that's fine. Yeah. That'll be a hit based on all the things. Um, can I get a D6, a D10, and um, plus it by three? Yeah. That is a four. Yep, so that was four. So what's your D10? The D10 is eight. That's 12 plus three, 15. Come on. Come on. Uh, so you bite into this guy's chest. It pulls out and this guy falls to the, straight to the floor. Oh, yeah. Nice. nice one. God for that. Excellent. <laughs> Let's go through the rounds. Lee, you doing anything? This guy, uh, yeah, you damn right I'm doing something. I am moving myself. Uh, this guy's on the floor, right? Yep. Um, I'm going to, first of all, voice is down. Can I check for a pulse? Uh, yeah, of course you can. Can you give me a d20 plus your... You don't have heal, do you, Lee? Uh, I'll double check. I don't think so. Uh, d skill. I believe your heal is your... Oh, yes, you do. Plus two, your wisdom. Okay. Uh, so d20 plus two to check him over. Oh, my goodness me. Six. <laughs> uh, you can't tell if he's alive or dead. All oh, right. Well, in that case, um, I mean, is that um, that is a kind of move, isn't it? So I have to wait. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, Ad, your turn. What are you doing? Um, can I? How much have I got? Uh, Thirty-five. What's my move? Thirty. Isn't it? I'll just make my way over to these pair, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, the imp's going to go. You've not changed your orders, so he's going to attack the helpless guy on the floor. Yes. Um, he's going to take his scorpion tail and he's going to push it through this guy's throat. Um, because this guy's helpless, he's going to take it and he's essentially just going to rip out his throat with his scorpion tail. Nice. Um, and like, there's just blood and like half a hanging tongue, like lulling out. And this like imp's just not going to stop. Like he's just going to keep savaging this um, this corpse. Uh, Snake has a final go, Lee, before it disappears. Um, yeah, he may as well bite him. I'm not going to attack anyone else with it. Yeah, bite him. Yeah. yeah, it ejects him, poisons him, but this guy is safely dead. He has no neck left based on um, you know, what the, the imp's doing it to it. He's mauling this guy's face. He's like biting his nose off. Like he's really, you know, I mean, he's a devil. So he's, he's you know, cannibalizing this corpse while he's able to. Um, Dave, your turn. I'm just amazed by this little NPC. Um, mm. Well, um, I'll tell the imp to calm down and to rest on my shoulder for a minute. Whilst okay. I uh, rummage through this guy's pockets. Okay, cool. Let's quickly generate some loot. Oh, God, we're playing to quite late. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice. <laughs> I didn't realise what the time was, though. 
Time flies when you're having fun. Mm. Time flies when you're being killed. <laughs> That's true. You've all survived. It's fine. Only just. <laughs> I'm on one health. Shall I? Can I generate loot next time? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll just remind myself to generate loot because just it's going to take a little bit of time. Try. I'll put it on the like, generate loot. Remind me. I might forget. I've made note of it, but I might forget. No. Um. But otherwise, he's got, you know, he's got thick leather armor on. He's got a um. He's got his trident or spear on him. Um. So that's all fine. He's, he's just got a set of weapons on. He does have loot. He does have valuables. Um, I'll just dish them out next session. Cool beans. Excellent. Cool. All right, so oh. we'll leave it there then. If that's all right with you guys. Yeah, that, that's perfect. That's good timing, actually. Till next Excellent. Time. Yeah. You've appeased a weird rock monster on an island. You've entertained some brownies and had a picnic with them. And you've <laughs> killed a man with a fork. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you next week. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.